Sorry, Nima, you need to unmute yourself, please, to speak. Can I start, ma'am? Yes, please start. Good morning and welcome to Guest of Honor, Chief Guest, and Speakers and Delegates in our webinar organized by Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing. Good morning, one and all. I'm Mrs. Nima VP, Professor in Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing, Ameti. It's my proud and privilege to address on behalf of Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing, which is organizing second international webinar on impact of COVID-19 on livelihood. Today, 31-5-2021. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to a dramatic loss of human life throughout the worldwide and presents an unprecedented challenge to public health, food system, and the world of work. This pandemic has decimated jobs and placed millions of livelihood at risk. Nearly half of the world, 3.3 billion global workforce are at risk of losing their livelihood. So in this present scenario, this topic is really effective for the audience and this will be knowledgeable for you. And I am proud and happy to welcome our honorable guest of honor, Sri Manoj Muttu sir, our administrator, for valuable presence in our webinar. Welcome you, sir. My hearty welcome to our director, Madam Srimadi Sharmila Roy, ma'am, chief guest of this event. Thank you, ma'am, for your presence. A very warm welcome to our general manager, Mr. Bolana Tripathi, sir, for his guidance for organizing this program. My hearty welcome to our principal, sir, to organize and conduct this webinar in an effective manner. And it's my kind hearted welcome to all our efficient, eminent, and resourceful speakers of this today section. It's my pleasure to welcome our all the delegates who are participating in this section. Thank you all for joining us and hope this will be a knowledgeable section for you all. But not least, I pray Almighty God to have the present throughout this session and make this section a successful one. Good morning to all. I am Ms. Divya Pandey, nursing tutor, Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing, Munsiganj Amethi. Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing started in the year 2007 with the motto of Seva Parmo Dharma, it's one of the unit of Indira Gandhi group of institution in the memory of former our Prime Minister of India, Srimati Indira Gandhi, under Sanjay Gandhi Memorial Trust. Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing is affiliated to Indian Nursing Council and approved by UP State Medical Faculty. Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing presently mm -hmm. offers courses of general nursing and midwifery. Auxiliary Nursing and Midwifery, Basic BSc Nursing, Post Basic BSc Nursing, and Certificate in Baby Nursing and Child Care. It's our privilege and proud to have our loving Administrator Sir, Retired Commander, Sri Manoj Muttu Sir. Sir, we are very fortunate to have you as our Guest of Honor 
Sir is retired Air Force pilot who has been about 25 years of experience in our healthcare. Sir is an active person, mentor, and guider for the development of our institution. I am very pleased to welcome our guest of honor to give a keynote on today's webinar. Sir, please. Uh, good morning, one and all. I am sorry we are having connectivity problems, so we've ultimately managed to get on on uh, 4G and uh, get through to you. So both uh, both of us will quickly go through our uh, hellos before we get disconnected here also. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Dr. Maheshwari, Dr. Manjuli, Dr. Vasanta Kumari, all the way from Ethiopia, Mr. Chetan Kumar, Bhaskar, Nima, all of you who are getting into this whole process of webinars to disseminate information. I am once again the last, the first webinar I said I am proud of uh, each and every one of you, be it the participants, be it the delegates, be it the organizers, for being able to take this process of dissemination of knowledge forward. You have chosen a specifically very, very important subject today, which is livelihood. You are aware that uh, the country itself is facing major economic crisis uh, ever since the pandemic started last year. And with the second wave, things have got progressively worse. We seem to be recovering, but now again, we've gone into our shells with lockdowns whatsoever. Uh, everybody is asking us to anticipate a third wave. So having a harsh look at livelihood at this point in time is very, very important. I would uh, wish you all the best. Have a wonderful webinar. Have a wonderful discussion. And may the delegates gain from this interaction. That is my blessing to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. My honor and <coughs> pleasure to introduce our director, ma'am, Srimadi Sharmila Roy, ma'am, director of Indira Gandhi Group of Institution. Madam is very loving and energetic and always guiding in our development of nursing institution and having always interest in reaching the knowledge to students in this crisis situation through our YouTube channel, rgcsk.edu, and always motivating us to do online teaching and webinar. I'm hearty welcome you, ma'am. Please give your special address in this occasion, ma'am. Good morning to everybody. And Nima, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. You know, the COVID-19 has hit the world in a manner which none of us ever anticipated. I don't think in the history of mankind, we've seen an onslaught of this nature. Even science fiction's probably never covered anything like this. However, now that we've been hit by it and we are dealing with it and we have to continue to deal with it. So the only way Many, many aspects. I mean, I need not point out the aspects of our life. In fact, our whole life has been impacted. And therefore, many, many aspects of our life I think their connectivity is gone. Nima, you can take. 
Yes, ma'am. Divya. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable address on this webinar. Divya, can we start our session on today's webinar, Impact of COVID-19 Livelihood? Before going that, I would like to introduce our respected principal, sir, Dr. Ilakwana Bhaskara Raj, sir, who always observe the need of the current status of students learning and organized to do the webinar on impact of COVID-19 livelihood. So now I call upon our principal, sir, to unfold the theme of today's webinar. Thank you, Ms. Divya. Uh, good morning, one and all. Uh, respected, honorable, our administrator, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, respected, madam, uh, director, ma'am. And uh, all uh, GM, sir, and all my uh, colleagues and uh, eminent speakers. The, I know well, uh, well known persons, all the speakers. Uh, they have vast knowledge in nursing field. So, welcome you, uh, ma'am. Welcome you, oh, sir. I welcome all uh, participants. Uh, for our uh, IGS Tone uh, webinar series. So this is our uh, second uh, webinar. You are keep on uh, concentrating on uh, impact our knowledge to the students and uh, increase their, enhancing their knowledge also. So on the point of now, you are had a new concept because all are knows now, uh, there is uh, no pandemic uh, disease. It'll, uh, almost two years, it will be arrested everyone, not only one or two, it's a worldwide. The consequences of COVID-19 pandemics are stitching uh, far behind the spread of disease, it developing so many impact, not only spread the disease, not only cause the issues on health, it is uh, give the so much uh, uh, stitching that uh, it's going to the impact to the entire uh, health. You know very well, as a nurse, uh, you studied this definition, uh, health is a complete state of physical, mental, social, spiritual, and economical well-being. So these all the points, all the uh, concept, the health concept disturbed by this disease. So in developing country, like our country, reducing income, uh, food insecurity, inadequate education, increased domestic violence due to COVID because uh, insecure of uh, no food and uh, money. All, all are contributing to the Western welfare of the people as well as poverty. So it uh, global economic uh, uh, downturn, extensive uh, containment measures, so many restrictions and uh, inadequate social protection. Yes, this is also, this is only second way now, uh, so much in our India. How the mean a significant drop in the income of uh, income for many in the developing world. Uh, it leads to half of that nearly 3.3 million global workforce. I'm telling that workforce or the risk of losing the livelihood. Informal, uh, formal economic worker like coolie worker, informal day, daily wages are particularly vulnerable this uh, uh, because majority lack of the social protection as un, and uh, uh, assess the quality of uh, health care, looking at the quality of health care, sudden pandemic, uh, unable to get proper uh, care, you know, issues, a lot of issues, medication, vaccination and uh, oxygen, everything. The sudden assess quality of health care have lost their productivity ascent also. So it, uh, it without this means to hear income uh, during the lockdown, that close that, uh, that uh, I told informal workers, the, uh, even uh, formal workers also get the salary pattern and work lockdown. Many are unable to uh, you know, feed their family own as well as family also. For most, uh, this is I highlighted, for most no income means no food. At the best, uh, less food, less uh, nutrition food uh, also giving. It leads to malnutrition. Malnutrition leads to infection. Infection leads to uh, other issues and uh, death. 
for this uh, livelihood have been further worsened through the education pattern also as evidence you know now there are a lot of online classes online uh, uh, no uh, sections education sections uh, started uh, as a september last year say, uh, says that almost 53 countries worldwide it shows that uh, 850 million people learn as affected almost 282 million children not get the food in the schooling food and uh, less in come to the impact in nurses nurses also backbone is the nurses this is the main one nurses are backbone our healthcare system all our nose have been risking their life you are taking the risk and working the various sector of covid uh, related uh, uh, no care everything according to international council of nurses they mentioned 1.7 million healthcare workers this is only for uh, 34 countries statistics only they are infected by the covid 19 in the last end of the last year so 1.6 million healthcare persons are getting the infection uh, infected by the covid 19 80% nurses are report this is also given icn only reports this is 80% nurses have the some kind of mental health distress it's anxiety depression uh, social isolation discrimination so many things they have mental stress this topic and i'll going to discuss uh, almost 208 uh, 200 uh, 2710 nurses lost their uh, life due to covid 19 it is only this nominal or formally registered cases only 59 countries only it is a last year statistics only it's so on so 200 uh, 2710 nurses lost their life due to covid 19 so uh, this concept only today you are gathered here and organized the uh, IGS con uh, webinar series added the second topic impact of COVID-19 on livelihood. So in this topic you are have the so many you uh, already I discussed to you all the health, the physical, mental, social, economical pattern impact is uh, possible. So these uh, points you like to discuss with uh, some expert. So COVID-19, it's a now new concept. One is arised, uh, uh, no, uh, all uh, that all scientists and doctors are praising that uh, fungi, uh, fungi infections. So this is COVID-19 and associated disorders plus impact. Impact means like one kind of effect as well as social stigma leads to the disease severity and uh, health, uh, de death. This is the most common due to most of even you take nearly 40, 30 to 40 percent death, they make make to them fear, uh, no uh, COVID-19 because full knowledge, full uh, full of the treatment, uh, full force of treatment, this and all is still not identified properly. So this uh, fear itself caused that impact only caused the death also. That only I made here one conceptual model. So these uh, points I uh, like to uh, today I like to uh, introduce these speakers, uh, Dr. Uma Mageshwar, Madam, going to discuss with the COVID-19 with the associate disorders, and Dr. Manjuri, Madam, going to discuss psychological impact uh, uh, that uh, COVID-19 psychological impact to the people, uh, and uh, Dr. Vasundu Kumari, Madam, from Ethiopia, Madam, going to explain that uh, social and uh, economical impact on. Uh, COVID-19. So, uh, Mr. Chetan Kumar uh, from Hyderabad are also going to explain that uh, what are the guidelines uh, for the prevention measures to follow. So, thank you everyone uh, given this uh, opportunity. Uh, you are, I hope uh, from our uh, IGS fund uh, able to give adequate detailed uh, knowledge on this topic. Please uh, enjoy our uh, webinar. Thank you once again for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for the package of information on the topic impact of COVID-19 on livelihood. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Let us start our section. It's my honor to introduce our first speaker in our webinar on impact of COVID-19 livelihood. <clears throat> it's my hearty pleasure and loving to introduce our loving madam, Dr. Srimadi Bhima Uma Maheshwari, ma'am. Madam, having total more than 21 years of experience in the field of nursing education and practice. Madam completed her BSc nursing degree 
in the year of 1997 november from umayalaji college of nursing chennai under dr mgr university madam achieved her msc nursing degree in the year 2002 march from umayalaji college of nursing under dr mgr university madam pursued phd nursing degree from savida university chennai madam have the professional experience such as worked as clinical instructor assistant lecturer lecturer in umayalaji college of nursing under maternity administration nursing research department from 1998 to 2005 madam worked as associated professor in radhika magai memorial college of nursing maharashtra from the year 2005 to 2007 madam was vice principal and hod in badmashri institute of nursing from the year 2008 to 2015 now madam pursuing principal come hod in the position uh, in badmashri institute of nursing kengeri bangalore from 2015 to till date madam have various activities like custodian for rajiv gandhi university of health science theory examination madam having the experience of paper evaluator setting question paper in child health nursing examiner for ug and pg practical thesis evaluator phd examiner in savida university member of editorial board of international journal of pediatric nursing in red flower publication new delhi madam attended various workshop conferences seminars and madam organized various workshop and conferences seminars madam got certificate of proficiency in principles of unani system of medicine on october 2000 at kalaiwani aragam madam published various articles in national international pediatric nursing in red flower collegation in ma workshop conferences city of madras chennai post certificate course on basic counseling skill in velamal institution madurai in india and ma madam received academic excellence and outstanding contribution to nursing research award on september 30 from malachi college of nursing chennai in the successful completion of phd nursing madam received prestigious award of dr apg abdul kalam lifetime achievement national award for distinguished contribution to the development of nation and achieving outstanding excellence in the field of teaching research and publication on february 29 2020 from international institution for social and economic reforms bangalore I hereby welcome our speaker, Dr. Bima Uma Maheshwari, ma'am, my teacher, guide, philosopher. Uh, it's my pleasure and hearty welcome, ma'am. You can proceed the presentation. Uh, take the section of COVID nineteen associated disorder, please, ma'am. Thank you, Nima, for a uh, uh, very detailed. Uh, Uh, intro about me. I'm very simple person. Okay, and you know, uh, very warm welcome and a good morning to the distinguished uh, uh, managing uh, personnels of uh, Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Baskar, uh, Ilakuna Baskar, Principal, the Technical Committee members, and uh, my special uh, uh, welcome to uh, Nima Baskar and uh, the day of speakers of today and uh, dear. friends because without you uh, this day cannot be happen to share our uh, knowledge okay in this uh, wonderful online platform so a very happy morning to everyone so let me start with the session yes uh, covid 19 uh, associative disorder um, it's really this covid 19 it was a challenging task the name sounds good right what is covid 19 okay it's all very good but it is a very dreadful disease so the topic given to me is associated uh, disorders so now we will see uh, what i am going to discuss in this uh, uh, topic so today's session i am going to concentrate or i am going to discuss uh, on the following aspects that uh, glimpse on covid 19 pandemic second wave graph 
and uh, the fungal infections which is a dreadful condition throughout india it is a alarming signals it has been given to all the uh, covid 19 patients fungal infections the black fungus white fungus and yellow fungus and brief note on the post covid symptoms it's uh, regarding the uh, covid 19 second wave how it has been initiated in india it is uh, alarming uh, uh, for all the entire countries right okay but india is suffering a lot so let me take you to uh, the first wave that we have started india started with this nearly for past one and a half year we are suffering with this uh, we are facing this challenge of covid 19 so from to uh, 2020 january it has entered india india and uh, strict vigilance has been started from the month of uh, uh, march 2020 so entire uh, states the entire uh, universe has uh, in a, a shutdown a uh, complete shutdown and slowly the restrictions have been released in the month of uh, uh, like uh, uh, august like that and again it has been raised to the peak the first wave has raised to the peak in the month of september i cannot forget this september because due to this covid i lost my father also and again it was tapering down in the month of november and december january like that and february again it has peaked that is the second wave it has been started in india so here i am showing the difference of uh, uh, the comparison of uh, india and the uh, united states so in first wave of covid the uh, united states ranking the first whereas the india was in the fourth position now in the second wave the india is in a, a second uh, a second position because that much of impact uh, we have been facing it and uh, we are facing all the challenges so red uh, uh, color indicates the us so it has uh, the second wave has started in the month of uh, uh, july uh, 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 like uh, 2020 it has been st uh, started and then it raised to the peak in the month of uh, uh, january and then it came down in the month of uh, april this is regarding the us because the various precautions what they have been taken care the second wave has been reduced and mortality has been come down whereas in india it has been uh, denoted with a uh, green uh, so in the month of uh, uh, last year like uh, 2020 it has been started like a uh, uh, march month and then it has raised up in the month of uh, uh, september and then it was declining down like november and uh, uh, december so that all the restrictions have been uh, uh, given uh, uh, more freedom that is they opened the malls okay some colleges have been opened and swimming pools everything has been opened and there was no social distancing and all the public has been uh, leading a normal life and but the second wave has been started in the month of uh, uh, march and especially the state of maharashtra the beautiful city of this uh, uh, bombay okay it has been affected a lot with uh, uh, this uh, covid uh, uh, 19 second wave and uh, the shutdown has been started in the month of march and slowly in other states also it has been showed as uh, uh, vigorous and in the month of april it has moved up that is within 62 days there was a rise of mortality has been concentrated where we look about this covid uh, uh, 19 first wave of it was starting only on the old age people and the uh, middle to adult to okay the mortality rate was high but uh, we were able to manage we have not seen this uh, uh, type of uh, uh, deteriorating or uh, losing the lives of uh, uh, good heart people and many human beings we have lost but in the second wave the uh, mortality rate has been i uh, it has gone up within 62 days and then a strict vigilance has been taken with all the states and now 10 states has been considered and it has been affected with this uh, uh, black fungus infection uh, white fungus infection okay that is mycomycosis and all the 10 states have been declared as a epidemic so this all the glimpse of the uh, second wave how it has affected india and now india is facing this challenge and it is tackling the situation so this all the some of the graphs i just wanted to highlight and now we'll see about this uh, fungal infection it is not very new concept but this fungal infection it is affecting especially the covid 19 patients who have been recovered or who are still taking the treatment in the hospital okay hospitalized patients and also the patients who have been recovered from this covid 19 okay so now we are going to see about the black fungus which is other name called as the micor mycosis white fungus and the yellow fungus so this all the some of the pics have uh, collected it so now we'll see what is a uh, black fungus or mycormycosis mycormycosis is a very rare fungal infection and it is caused uh, due to exposure of a group of molds which is uh, known as the mycormycetes and it is commonly found in soil plants leaves 
manure, rotten wood, and decaying fruits and the vegetables. And this fungus, it affects all the organs of our body, that is eyes, nose, face, lungs, and even it affects the brain, which causes more severity. This uh, mucormycosis, it can occur any time after the COVID-19 infection, okay, either during the hospital stay or uh, several days uh, after the discharge also, this fungal infection can uh, enter into the body. And some experts, okay, the uh, doctor, ex uh, the doctors or the researchers, they're uh, giving a glimpse that uh, it can also be detected in people who are not uh, uh, affected with this uh, uh, COVID-19 diseases. But now India is facing a huge crisis or huge challenges. Uh, only the COVID-19 patients are suffering with this mycormycosis. And there are some types of mycormycosis are there, that is rhinocerebral, okay? So it affects the sinus and the brain. Already I've told the brain also can be affected and uh, it, the fatality rate is very high. And it, uh, the most incidences we can see in pulmonary, it affects the pulmonary, especially the lungs and also the gastrointestinal, that is nose, and uh, the oral, the heart palate is affected. And also even the eyes also, it has been affected. And most of the COVID-19 patients have lost their eyesight because uh, it has not been detected at the early stages. And cutaneous, even in the skin also, it can uh, affect. And there is other type which is the disseminated. So now we can see uh, why it is occurring in the COVID-19 patients and what are the risk factors. Already I've discussed in the previous uh, uh, slide that uh, the COVID-19 patients also affected, especially now we are facing the crisis or we are facing the challenges. It is affecting most of the COVID-19 patients. The reason is that where the immunity is very low for this COVID-19 patient or it is reduced and they are taking a number of the uh, steroid drugs. When the steroids have been taken normally, okay, the immunity will be going down. So it is most of the uh, COVID-19 patients that is positive patients only affected with this uh, uh, fungal infection, mycormycosis. And this COVID-19, it damages the airway mucosa and also the blood vessels and it increases increases the serum uh, iron level where this fungal has a very good breeding place to grow and causes the infection and spread the infection. And the antifungus, and one more thing, it is the yesterday alert, uh, yesterday alert that uh, not only black fungus, white fungus and yellow fungus infections are there, the another fungal infection, it has come into a highlight. Uh, now the experts are revealing that is the aspergillosis. It is also a fungal infection and it, uh, it is uh, present in the indoors and the outdoors. And it also affects the patients where the immunity is very low and it is targeted on the COVID-19 patients. So this uh, antifungus like uh, um, uh, warniconazole that uh, it inhibits when this uh, treatment has been given, uh, this aspergillosis, we can control it. Whereas this mucor, that is the uh, mucormycetes, it will be staying inside the body and it spreads to the various parts of the internal organs. And uh, it also affects the uh, persons, especially the COVID-19 patients, okay, who are uh, under the ventilator support, okay, and staying in the, uh, in the ICU for a longer duration under mechanical ventilator support and where they are with uh, completely dependent upon this oxygen support and humidifiers. And there are more prone for this uh, organism to breathe and multiply and enter into the uh, vital organs. And uh, uh, I've already discussed that uh, uh, humidifiers has been used and if there is uh, negligence, uh, that is they have used only the tap water or they have not used the sterile water where it gives a breathing place, the environment it gives a breathing place for the organisms to uh, grow. And uh, some of the, and this I've already discussed, that is a uh, longer duration of using of uh, steroids. And uh, some of the, now the second wave, it uh, taught us a very good lesson. Earlier, the uh, COVID-19 first wave, uh, many of them have uh, known what are the drugs need to be taken. And in all in the websites, okay, in the WhatsApp, in Instagram, everything they have shared. And uh, they themselves have started with the treatment, uh, treatment of taking the steroids. So the, the treat, uh, taking more steroids also, which uh, reduces the immune system. And uh, those have been affected with uh, diabetes and uh, where there is a, gl a blood glucose level is very high and uncontrolled diabetes, even on treatment also, the glucose level is not uh, coming down. Okay, this all the breeding places for the fungus to uh, grow and it uh, affects the immunity and it spreads the infection. And especially in the diabetic patients, we can see most of the uh, skin infections, bruises will be there, skin breakdown will be there. So it, the organism can enter through this uh, uh, break in the skin and enters and causes the uh, skin uh, fungal infections also. 
and uh, so nearly 11000 cases this is as per the statistics uh, of yesterday uh, 11000 cases has been affected with this uh, black fungal infections that is micor mycosis and nearly 10 states has been declared as uh, uh, epidemic i know what the, i you all know what is the meaning of epidemic epidemic is uh, the spread of infection within a community so nearly in india 10 states have been affected with this uh, uh, micor mycosis okay and uh, and every uh, state has Uh, uh, declared it as a epidemic now we'll see what are the other contributing uh, uh, factors uh, uh, that uh, gives rise to the uh, growth of this or entry of this organisms to enter into a body and causes the uh, various seriousness of the impact so those who are suffering with a cancer and they are taking the immunosuppressants they have taken it hiv aids where the immunity is very lowering because of the treatment what they are consuming it okay kidney disorders okay the drugs what they are consuming it okay all those things and also the uh, patients who are taking uh, for anemia that is iron dosages they are taking it trauma burns and malnourished people okay this all the uh, conditions where uh, the immunity system is lowering and which uh, the organism can enter into the body uh, very easily so how this uh, the, the root of infection or root of entry of this organism into the body there are three main routes are there one is the inhalation so the spores is the fungus is found outside the environment okay i've already discussed soil plants leaf okay uh, a decayed vegetable decayed fruits it is there and uh, unsanitary environment it will be uh, there so when our immunity is very low that uh, it will enter into our body so three main routes are there what is inhalation while we breathe the spores can enter into our lungs and it can spread the infection and to ingestion when we take a contaminated food that also there is a, a more chances and this covid patients okay the main reason of this uh, uh, fungal infection is because of the uh, ta- uh, over usage or taking of the uh, steroids uh, uh, medications and also inoculation where there is a break in the skin okay bruises or some sores or there some break in the skin burns anything so these are the three routes how the uh, organism can enter and it is a breeding place and the infection will be spreading so another thing everybody will be questioning whether this is a contagious okay covid 19 spreads from one person to the another person it is a communicable disease whereas this uh, fungal infection it is not a communicable it will be present inside the host and the, it will uh, show its nature by showing its uh, uh, severity so it is not a contagious disease so now we'll see some of the signs and symptoms of this uh, uh, mucor mycosis okay so throughout the uh, organs or internal organs will be affected okay the what is the beauty in the uh, in this is it is externally visible the symptoms are externally visible the patients can reveal it so that uh, once uh, the symptoms have been ruled out and immediately uh, the treatment can be started so nose we can see the patient will suffer with a nasal blockage nasal bleeding nasal discharge and in the mouth you can see a dark uh, uh, lesion and the heart palate okay and uh, tooth take will be there tooth lo- uh, loosening also will be there it affects the sinuses so one side uh, face swelling also will be there and it also affects the eyes so that the patients will have eye pain redness blurring of vision will be there and many of the uh, cases uh, they have lost their eyesight also they have lost their uh, uh, jaw also by surgical removal has been uh, done it and many uh, hospitals they are doing the surgeries also and um, Uh, lungs it can have the chest pain will be there breathlessness cough also will be there and generalized symptom fever and vomiting and this organ when it reach this uh, fungus when it reaches the brain okay they'll have the symptoms like a uh, headache drowsiness limb weakness will be there seizures will be there hemorrhages okay and also it lead to uh, death so this infection is uh, very fatal and if not attended on time okay the mortality rates are very high so this all the some of the diagnostic procedures how to rule out or how to fa- find out how far the organism has been spread uh, the, uh, the routine thing with a uh, hp collection uh, with a physical examination okay and the other invasive procedures like an invasive non invasive procedures like with the mri and ct scan of the nasal cavity sinuses and brain can be performed to detect the extent of the spread of this organism that is the mycomycetes uh, and also with uh, ct chest we can found out how far it has invaded deep uh, lungs 
and bronco pulmonary lavage or bronco alveolar lavage also can be uh, done aspirate can be done to rule out the organism and endoscopy of the nasal cavity so these all is some of the diagnostic protocol uh, where uh, the hospitals have been doing it to uh, reduce the spread of the infection so that uh, 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 intensive treatment has been started for the patient and uh, what is the uh, treatment uh, for this um, uh, mycormycosis uh, antifungal agents we are giving especially the amphotericin b uh, injection really uh, india is in very uh, crisis situation economically also financially okay it is really uh, in a crisis situation and this uh, to receive this uh, drugs it is very costly that is at least minimum of rupees 9000 rupees is required to purchase this drugs okay any of the uh, the medical team is uh, fighting for it and and then uh, uh, they are providing the treatment for the uh, uh, victim uh, the for the victim who are suffering with this uh, disease so amphotericin b injection has been given for a period of 4 to 6 weeks after that okay they have started with the oral uh, uh, posaconazole and uh, this has been given for uh, uh, several months of pe uh, period and the drugs have been stopped uh, stopped after uh, um, after the uh, clinical uh, that is the signs and symptoms have been reduced and after the clearance is shown in the radiological uh, evaluation and uh, any of the expert that is the medical team has to be alert always uh, because this infection will spread to all the the eye surgeons ent specialists and also the uh, neurosurgeons have to supervise this uh, uh, patient always if anything happens means that the surgical uh, procedure procedure has to be carried out and most of the cases has been infected uh, uh, with this uh, Uh, black patches on the mouth and even sinuses and also in the uh, it has affected the eyes so surgical removal has been done that is dissection of this uh, infected tissues and sometimes the eye loss eyesight has also been uh, 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 lost for the patients and they remove the upper jaw also and uh, now the uh, uh, process is Uh, those have been affected with this, and those uh, organs have been removed. Okay, processes has been. Uh, 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 they are planning to give give the processes after the healing process. So this is regarding about the uh, mycomycosis and dentist. Uh, 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 let me see about the dose and dose of uh, black fungus. Okay, it is just a repetition. So we have to control the high blood sugar levels, and uh, the blood sugar levels need to be monitored. and uh, we have to use only the clean and sterile water in the uh, humidifier and uh, use of steroids and anti fungal medication with the supervision of strict vigilance of the doctor doctor prescription and what are the doses do not overlook the symptoms of black fungus okay black fungus is there it will affect the covid patient and not all the covid patients okay so we have already told where the immunity is very suppressed okay and comorbid patients only will be affected so, so don't overlook that i'll be getting this black fungus right okay so if, uh, if we see about the uh, notify the symptoms the treatment is there and so the mortality can be reduced and do not take uh, very lightly uh, about uh, if suppose uh, uh, the patients have been suffering with a uh, uh, blocked uh, nose that no a uh, nasal discharge anything is there and uh, whatever doctors has been advised okay do not neglect okay don't think uh, uh, whether it should be done like that right okay so we should not neglect the investigation this are the do's and the don'ts and um, yes uh, whether the covid patient positive patient will affect with this infection 100 percentage okay those the immunity is very less those who are suffering with this comorbid uh, condition this fungal infection will be affected but if we rule out at the earlier stage only all these symptoms the mortality can be reduced and the entry of this organism will be there only after the exit of the covid 19 virus yes this is a, a very uh, threatening thing the prognosis if you see right okay if uh, it has affected the sinus uh, the recovery chances are more the mortality is very less and uh, if suppose uh, if have not be identified this uh, uh, symptoms means then the mortality rate is high that is 40 to 50 percentage and if uh, we start with the treatment the mortality rate comes down that is uh, 80 percentage of recovery is there and this uh, oral dentist has given a very good uh, three tips uh, uh, how to avoid this uh, uh, 
uh, oral mucor myso, uh, mycosis, okay, that is the black fungus formation in a uh, oral cavity. So three tips he has given, that is maintain oral hygiene. So twice or thrice they have to maintain the oral hygiene by brushing the teeth, uh, keeping the mouth very clean, the oral hygiene need to be maintained. And also they can do this uh, oral rinsing can be done uh, to keep their mouth uh, refreshing. Okay, uh, to avoid this uh, uh, moistness in the uh, mouth surface and also disinfect the tooth uh, brush and the cleaners, whatever you with the mild uh, uh, antiseptic uh, uh, reagents or the mouthwash. So now next we'll move on to this is all about the uh, black fungus that is mycormycosis. The next thing uh, which uh, we are facing is the white fungus. Okay, nearly 11,000 cases has been ruled out with the uh, black fungus and now the mushrooming is also the white fungus also. So this white fungus is more dangerous than the black fungus as per the suggestion of the uh, experts. And four cases has been detected in Patna and also uh, it has been uh, uh, diagnosed or uh, going to be diagnosed in uh, Bihar also. And the symptoms the same like the uh, COVID-19 symptoms. And here we are going to see in proceeding slides. And this white fungus also will be affected to the patients who, whose immunity is uh, uh, very less. And uh, those who are uh, having a poor hygiene practices, okay, where immunity is uh, uh, very less. For these patients also, this white fungus will be, uh, infections will be contracted. And uh, what are the common risk factors and what will be affected with this? It, it is very lethal, more lethal, okay, when compared to uh, black fungus, it affects the, all the organs like brain, digestive system, respiratory organs, respiratory organs, kidneys, everything. And this can be ruled out by doing a HRCT, that is a, a chest scan they can do. And if they delay the treatment, it is very dangerous. And these are the uh, uh, risk factors, okay, the causes or risk factors, okay, uh, the persons who come in contact with unsanitary surfaces, okay, and uh, already it is uh, uh, seen in the COVID-19 patients, okay, they're using the, they're not changing the uh, humidifier water, sterile waters, it has not been seen. And these are all the risk factors, that is immunocompromised, unsanitary environment, it is uh, uh, giving a breeding place of this white fungus, and those are long, uh, uh, duration of uh, steroid treatments and suffering with cancer, diabetes, all these things, it shows the immunity has been uh, reduced, right? Okay, so which gives a breeding place for the fungus to enter. And these all the signs and symptoms of what, uh, uh, which has been revealed in this uh, white fungus, uh, same like the COVID-19 symptoms, chest pain, cough, breathlessness, headache, okay, they'll have toothache, face swelling will be there, okay, sinus problem will be there, all those things will, all those uh, signs and symptoms which is add to the COVID-19, this white fungus also will be exhibiting in the COVID-19 patients. And this is the uh, treatment of choice, that is antifungal uh, uh, drugs uh, they have uh, uh, giving to treat this uh, white fungal infections. Now we move on to the another dangerous that is a dreadful disease that is the yellow fungus. And here in Uttar Pradesh, one case has been ruled out with this yellow fungus. And this uh, patients already suffered with white fungus, black fungus, and with the yellow fungus. And all these three fungal infections are very dreadful. And what is the uh, essence of this yellow fungus is that, okay, at least the white fungus and black fungus, okay, the symptoms, it will, it will be shown outside. The patient will be known. But whereas this white fungus and symptoms, it is developed internally. So it is uh, taking time to detect and provide the treatment uh, in case of the white fungal infection. So already I've explained about this uh, slide. And what are the risk factors and how this fungus starts to develop is that because of the humidity, when there is a humidity is very less than 30 to 40 percentage in the moist regions and also uh, that is uh, the unstale foods, okay, the foods or vegetables are uh, decayed, uh, which gives a breeding place for this organism to grow, overuse of steroids, antibacterial uh, medications and patients are suffering with the comorbid conditions where the immunity is very uh, going down, they're all are uh, risk for this yellow fungus infection and this yellow fungus symptoms it will be uh, the detecting itself is taking a delay because it starts internally and this all the some of the signs and symptoms the common symptoms of yellow fungus infection is weight loss poor metabolism poor appetite acute lethargy fatigue and exhaustion no one will think about yes it is a, a symptom of the yellow fungus okay because uh, weight loss uh, um, uh, many people those who are in covid okay right okay taking the treatments okay they're not taking a proper food weight loss will be there okay so these are the common symptoms but these are the symptoms which triggering which shows for the yellow fungus infection 
and uh, the, uh, if it is not detected on time, some of the most severe symptoms we can reveal is that first leakage will be there, sunken eyes, organ failure, and slow healing of the wounds and necrosis also will be taking place, which uh, is a uh, uh, leading uh, high mortality or fatality rates are high in the yellow fungus. So uh, the yellow fungus, uh, it is uh, uh, it, the uh, the prognosis of this yellow fungus is the uh, detecting itself. It's taking very delay, so mortality is very high. If it is detected at early time, we can uh, uh, reduce that um, uh, reduce this uh, mortality, and we can treat the conditions. And this is the treatment. Uh, uh, Amphotericin B. It is the treatment of choice uh, to treat this yellow fungus. And these are some of the precautions. Need to keep the house and surroundings very clean, and they should not consume, uh, which is a decayed food. Okay, and uh, need to check with the uh, humidity in the room, cross ventilation, open the doors, windows, so that cross ventilation will be there. Okay, moistness has to be reduced. And uh, uh, COVID-19 patients, okay, they should not neglect because this is this is especially shown in the COVID-19 patients only immediately with the alarming signs and symptoms. They have to start with the treatment so the mortality rates can be reduced. And now, so so far, we have concentrated on this dreadful uh, uh, fungal infections, white fungus, black fungus, white fungus, yellow fungus, and now aspergillosis also. It is very alarming and very uh, challenging, okay? And uh, it is really shaking the entire country of the India and state, uh, states have already been affected and they, uh, they're treating the uh, patients, right? Now we'll move on to the next concept that is associative disorders will include this post-COVID syndrome. So every pair, each and everyone okay who have been affected with this uh, uh, covid 19 in the first wave or in the second wave okay they are uh, they are facing this uh, uh, some of the uh, syndrome so syndrome means it is a group of symptoms so it's called as the syndrome so during the second wave it is more alarming so now we'll see one by one what all the co post covid syndromes post covid uh, syndromes one in 10 Indians are suffering uh, uh, with this uh, uh, post-COVID uh, syndrome as per the uh, researchers or the experts have given the uh, explanation. One in 10 Indians are suffering with this uh, uh, post-COVID uh, uh, syndrome after, after the impact of this uh, second wave. And it can be mild where it can be resolved by itself or it will go to moderate and severe Okay, where we have to take a proper treatment for, to recover it. And... Um, as per the Indian researchers, uh, some of the most common long COVID symptoms seen in patients and may require some attention. So we'll see one by one persistent cough. Okay, so it is a COVID-19 uh, uh, symptoms will have the persistent cough after recovery. Also, the patients will have this persistent cough. And so it can be treated with uh, consuming uh, uh, daily consuming of uh, hot water or lozenges or a cough suppressants or with a soothing herbal preparation so that we can uh, reduce this uh, persistent Cough. And if suppose it has not been under control, means it is not controlling, then they have to uh, uh, do a reference with the doctor, such as the doctor's opinion. And next is the malay joint pains, okay, all those pains the uh, COVID-19 uh, patients are suffering after the uh, recovery, a feeling of uneasiness, they frequently feel fatigue, exhaustion will be there, already their immunity is very low, joint aches, okay, muscle pain, headache, all is there for them, okay, for a few weeks they'll be suffering with this, after the recovery also, they'll be suffering with all these uh, muscle ache, muscle pain, joint pain, and even they have a low-grade fever, chills, so it indicates appear of reinfection so immediately they have to uh, consult the doctor next is the uh, 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 symptoms uh, they are seeing is the sleep disorders okay so uh, see uh, many of my friends also have been affected with this covid 19 and they have uh, told me uh, bima uh, really uh, really i'm feeling so sleepy and feeling so tired okay uh, all those things are there but uh, some patients they uh, don't have uh, uh, this uh, you know, they're not sleeping uh, they're not concentrating on sleeping they have this uh, sleep problem my father also so uh, didn't sleep uh, okay he was really suffering with the body aches everything so a sleeping problem also is a, a main symptom where this covid 19 patients are uh, uh, revealing it after the uh, recovery uh, so they'll have a sleeping impairment issues okay so uh, for that they can uh, practice yoga or meditations okay or counseling session they can go so that uh, or uh, uh, this uh, foot reflexology right okay foot reflexology or something they can go undergo it they, they can solve this problem 
and memory impairment or the brain lock this is another thing right they are uh, suffering with uh, uh, mental health uh, problems anxiety fear stress okay post traumatic uh, uh, stress they are all uh, uh, having and they cannot concentrate on the uh, daily routines okay it is taking more time for them to uh, come to a normal routine so they also can go for uh, uh, some counseling session or yoga or meditation so that they can uh, they can concentrate on the uh, task and next uh, thing we are seeing about the um, uh, dizziness uh, breathlessness uh, will be there that is sudden rise of uh, breathlessness uh, even after the recovery uh, of this uh, covid patients okay this uh, they have to uh, immediately uh, need to looked upon and uh, take the uh, doctor opinion chest pain because it is a we cannot uh, neglect it it can go for myocardial infection also so nearly the, these symptoms has to be looked upon immediate management has to be considered so these people will have a, a, a light headedness okay the oxygen saturation level will be uh, going up and down okay and so they can go all these asanas and immediate attention need to be considered and next uh, the po uh, the post covid uh, patients are suffering with the uh, renal damage even they didn't have the kidney uh, disorders uh, uh, earlier uh, but now they are having some problems uh, uh, which affects the kidney also so this also need to be uh, considered and uh, this kidney damage they can see in the comorbid patient that is who are suffering with diabetes and with uh, hypertension so they have to control with the diet uh, with salt and the oil restricted they can so that further damage can be prevented and immediate uh, attention need to be take uh, consider and next is the uh, leg pain and leg swelling okay these all the problems also has been faced by this uh, post covid uh, uh, symptoms for the covid patients so once a leg uh, swelling is there leg pain is there so they can do some sort of exercises they can go for uh, uh, walking and uh, next they can do some uh, leg exercises they well uh, sleeping they can keep keep their legs uh, uh, up on the pillow so that uh, this will be resolved and if suppose it cannot be resolved is that then they have to uh, refer the uh, doctor so these all these some of the many things are there but i have highlighted only few things uh, seven components that is seven symptoms i have highlighted so these all also the post covid uh, uh, associated uh, um, disorders or the uh, symptoms so uh, to conclude my topic okay uh, uh, really uh, this is a very challenging thing and we have lost in the second wave many uh, good arts okay many uh, uh, human beings we have lost and the second wave it is giving a trigger even for the uh, children okay and in that it uh, in the third wave we don't know how much of seriousness will be there so the special uh, teaching uh, to the frontline warriors that we are in the and we are in the nursing field on medical field whatever it is so whenever we go out uh, please uh, wear a double mask if you have n95 mask we can wear n95 mask maintain the social distancing frequently wash your hands okay take a good uh, diet that is a nutritious uh, uh, diet needs to be taken and without if you have uh, alarming symptoms okay please refer the doctor don't take your own uh, prescriptions because it will end up with a uh, deterioration and then uh, take care of your health uh, be safe. and uh, uh, i hope that i have covered the uh, concept of uh, associative disorders and uh, i have not shared my bibliography because all these things have connected from the uh, new i have taken it hope i have enlightened uh in the topic i wish you all the best and thank you uh, for the organizers especially the indira gandhi uh, school and college of nothing for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to enlighten on this topic thank you thank you once again thank you ma'am for your detailed revealed information of covid-19 associated disorders given uh, epidemic and was incidence of uh, various uh, state and across our india also madam collected so much detailed uh, very uh, knowledgeable section was uh, there of black fungus white fungus uh, yellow fungus and new diseases Uh, and this risk factors causes symptoms management treatment and what precautions to take to prevent all these associated disorders and madam has given a detailed information related to post covid 
syndrome, mainly of mental health, uh, post-COVID cough, sleep disturbances, leg pain, sudden breathlessness, forgetfulness, and renal damages. And uh, this was a very informative section, and I'm very sorry for your family also, ma'am. Uh, uh, I hope all this uh, uh, will be very effective and efficient uh, information for our uh, participants on this webinar. Thank you for your uh, information. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, Nima. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, uh, 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 sorry for uh, inconvenience, ma'am. Uh, it's my honor and uh, uh, pleasure to introduce our uh, director, ma'am, uh, Srimadi Sharmila Roy, ma'am, director of Indira Gandhi Group of Institution. It's, madam is very active and energetic and always guiding in our development of nursing in our institution. Always, uh, uh, madam, want to reach the information and knowledge to our uh, uh, students uh, during this crisis situation also. Now will force us to uh, do so many webinar, online teaching classes. Always, uh, ma'am will give a support to uh, give a good information to the students. So this is a very apt situation. I am hearty welcome you, ma'am, to give a special address on this uh, webinar section. Thank you. Thank you, Nima. Thank you. Uh, first of all, my apologies because we were suddenly interrupted in our internet connectivity. You know, we live in a tiny village in Goa and we've suffered from the cyclone recently. So our electricity and uh, Wi-Fi connections are not yet fully restored. So my apologies to all our delegates and to all our uh, speakers and everybody else. Now, going back to the subject, I think Dr. Maheshwari, your presentation was very, very informative and we really enjoyed the session. Thank you very much. And our condolences for your loss. Um, these are difficult times. I think each and every one of us has had to suffer losses of some kind. Of course, yours is very close, your father. May he uh, go on in peace the, to the world beyond. Now, coming back to the subject matter, uh, Bhaskar has, this is the second webinar that we are having. The, the first one was, of course, very successful. And now the second one, I'm told we have about 600 uh, registrations. registrations and there are many more attendees who are not registered. Really proud of this achievement. Really proud of this achievement. Now, coming back to the main topic of the impact of coronavirus in our lives, we've been impacted in many, many ways, which was most unforeseen by any of us. And I don't think there has been anything in the history of mankind even close to what we are going through at this moment. So there, the impact is in many folds in many, part, in many uh, sections of our lives. And the only way I think would be to be able to do out of the box thinking and to address issues in the manner, I mean, it's a changed world. And I don't know if the change will remain for very long or it is the way we are going to live. But things like webinars, things like online classes, um, things like uh, online education. These are going to be, I think, a regular part of our lives. So good luck to all of us to face this new world. And I think we are the, we should consider ourselves lucky that we have such a plethora of information available to us. However, I must point out for information to convert to knowledge, the information needs to be made use of. With that little piece of advice, thank you very much. And please continue with this session. And good luck to all of you. And many, many thanks to all our participants. Thank you, ma'am, for your uh, valuable uh, uh, motivational uh, address for our webinar, ma'am. Uh, you can watch this uh, on rgcsk.edu. Now I am handing the section to Divya. Thank you.
good morning to all hope you all are safe and fine myself divya pandey nursing tutor indira gandhi school and college of nursing i am very happy to introduce madam for today's webinar session dr ar manjuri principal shri satya sai institute of higher medical science college of nursing bangalore she is our second speaker of today's webinar and she will deal with the topic covid 19 psychological impact Madam did her B.Sc. Nursing from Omeya Achi College of Nursing in year 1997, and also owns master degree in Obstetrical and Gynecological Nursing in year 2002 from Omeya Achi College of Nursing. Completed M.A. in Public Administration from Madras University in year 2000. Did doctorate, doctorate PhD in nursing from Swetha University in year 2017. Currently working as a principal in, in Sri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Medical Science, College of Nursing, Bangalore. She had about 19 years of teaching experience, undergraduate and postgraduate programs. She had participated and presented various research paper in various conferences. Her publications are included in national and international journals. I am very happy to invite you, ma'am. Ma'am, please come forward and take your session. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Happy morning to one and all. And thank you, Divya Pandya, for your kind words and a, a good introduction. And first and foremost, I thank the management of the Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing and Dr. Bhaskar, principal, and his team for organizing this uh, wonderful webinar on the topic of COVID impact on the livelihood of the people, which is in need of the hour. And uh, Today, I'm very, uh, really happy to share this platform with all my uh, friends, Dr. Bhima Umamagishwari and Dr. Vasanta Kumari, and of course, all the participants. And I'm really glad that my friend, uh, Dr. Bhima Umamagishwari, has taken the first session, uh, the associated disorders of COVID, with a very great deal. Hope I will continue uh, the same for this uh, session. So the topic which is given to me is psychological impact of COVID-19. So before going into the topic, uh, let me share a story to all of you. There was a woman uh, with a small family, her husband and uh, two kids, and she was living in a uh, village in a small house. And one fine morning, husband says that uh, my parents are become very old and they would like to stay with us. And she also agrees for them to come and they all come and stay with them as a family. But when they came, this lady feels um, a lot of discomfort and uh, she feels that there's no place uh, in the house to go with. And she was not very happy being in the uh, house. And this was troubling her a lot. And she goes to the uh, saint who is a master. Okay. And then tells him that this is a scenario, what she is undergoing. And she wants a solution for that. And the master listens to all the things. And then he says, what are the other things you have at your home? So she says that I have a hen and chicks. And then I have goat. And then I have cow all the stuff. So he will tell first, okay, now take the um, hen and the chicks inside the house. So she obeys because she has a lot of trust with the master and she knows that he will be giving a solution to her. So uh, she keeps all the hen and chicks and it costs a lot of mess in the house and she has a lot of troubles. Then again, she goes back to the um, master and asks, Master, I've done, but still the problem is not sorted out. And then next he will say, next take the goat inside. So she will take the goat also inside and that becomes much more mess. 
and then she again goes back and says the same thing and he says now you take the cow inside and then she takes cow so cow also inside and there's no place at all everywhere um all cow dung sounds they were not able to sleep properly and it was a uh, chaos and mess in the house and at last she runs and says to the uh, comes to the master and us must i'm not able to bear it any more please give me a solution now the master will say no okay fine now you take off the uh, cow from your house so she will remove the cow from the house she feels little happy that there's some space for them and disturbances of cow noise is reduced then uh, she goes and tells it's better now compare but still i am not fully happy with that then next he will tell her to remove the cow i mean the goat and then the last finally the hen and now she feels when all the other things have gone out of the house she feels a lot of space is available in the house and she feels happy to live with her in laws so what is the lesson in this small story is that you we need to accept the life as it comes and then we can really live a, a life of happiness that's the moral of the story she was not this all depends upon the perception she was not able to perceive the in-laws being in her house but when other problems came she felt in-laws is not a big deal to live with in that small house they can accommodate so with this introduction let me start on the topic psychological impact of covid-19 so before going to the topic the session what we are going to have in today's thing is the objectives of the session is going to be you will know about the psychological effects of the covid and you also will understand the what are the measures you can take to overcome the uh, psychological problems during this covid 19 sorry yeah so as the previous speaker and the uh, principal dr baskar so they all have brief about the introduction of the uh, covid thing just a second i'm just having an issue Fine. thank you so we all know that covid is started in the year uh, 2019 december in uh, china and then it went to the all the parts of the world and due to this so they due to this a lot a lot a lot of spreading was taking place and the who has uh, declared that this pandemic it's going to be a pandemic in the uh, year march 2020 and we are still in the pandemic on and off and it's almost more than one and a half year and you can imagine what will be the psychological impact of this even for a stress which is there in our life for a small event uh, it takes lot of us lot of our efforts can imagine this for one and a half year we are undergoing this so that's what we are going to see in this session and aiming to contain the spread of the virus in the country so government and the countries have initiated a lot of things regulations like lockdown staying at home and social distance and vaccination so this all had an impact on the psychological aspects and apart from this there's a one more thing is added up that's a new associated this is what the previous speaker was speaking about so this all have an impact on the psychological aspects so coming to the uh, health and the psychology so health you all know in the introduction it was brief what is health it is a well being on all the dimensions and one dimension is the mental health so this mental health if you uh, take it in the sense of mental health as per the who it is the ability of an individual okay 
who is able to know his ability and then he can cope with the um, stresses whatever comes in his life and he should be a productive person that's what is a mental health and uh, i just want to know whether this uh, slides are seen can anybody yes, yes ma'am slide the show thank you so this mental health includes our emotional psychological and social well being it also affects how we think how we feel and how we act it also determines how we handle stress relate to others and how we make choices and when you see the mental health it's a combination of the biological psychological social and environmental i think the next speaker will be speaking about the social and uh, economical things so we'll stick on to the psychological so what are the impacts of uh, covid on the psychology of the person so what are the uh, effects we had based on the uh, impact of covid the first one is the irritability okay you get irritated because there's lot of confusion and lot of uh, anxiety and all the things and then fear of contracting the covid disease or spreading to the family members or spreading to the others that was also there and anger confusion frustration loneliness denial panic boredom guilt burnout this is all the common things which everyone in the world is experience right from the health care personnel to the children everybody okay anxiety depression insomnia stress obsessive compulsive disorder post traumatic stress disorder extremes of consequences we have seen lot of suicide so there are several factors which have an influence on the psychological uh, effect i the important thing is there are two external and internal factors coming to the internal factors it's a uh, depends upon the personality of the person or the gender or the economic status of the person all matters and then external if you see the culture the government all this have an influence but i'm not going to deal with all the things i'm going to just deal with the some of the uh, core or the key factors which are responsible for this psychological impact this first is the fear and anxiety uncertainty okay so coming to the fear and uncertainty so you all know that fear is a very natural phenomenon right so all of us have fear one time or the other in our life experience it's a way, not only for the human beings it's a natural phenomenon for any species and during the covid time it's not only fear about the death but also fear about the family disorganization or school closure or social isolation or economical consequences and this fear slowly developed into the anxiety depression and then um, anxiety related to spreading of infection to the others and fear of stigmatization okay people were uh, and in the beginning if you see many were not undergoing covid test because if they do the test they become positive and they feel that people will isolate they don't uh, speak to me and they see in a different uh, angle of view perceive things and then discrimination and this fear in a, a later stage if it becomes very intense people have attempted suicide so suicide is mainly because of the fear of infection or fear of infecting the others or being quarantined or mentally affected so these all the various reasons people ran for the suicide and one case in bangladesh a 40 year old took her life in a hospital bathroom after being refused the medical care due to the staff's fear of infection and the next factor is the stressors so the lot of stressors are there is i'm just going to highlight a few so first thing will be the potential exposure to covid okay and other loss of the loved ones like bima shared she lost her father so like that so many of them have lost even my some of my students have lost their parents so that as 
got a lot of stress on the persons and economic difficulties or unavailability of the food. And then this decision of the future plans, this you can see in these school children who are in the 10th and plus two. So they are not sure when their exams are going to be and what is the future. So it's all in the query. So that's how the stress us. And coming to the economic factors, economic factors, I'm not going to deal much because it will be dealt by the next speaker. So loss of the job or the business or uh, travel and trade is affected and unemployment or poverty, these are all the factors which contributes for these psychological impacts. And the domestic violence. So we all say that stay home, but it's not always a safe place for everyone, especially for the children and the women. And if you see a lot of uh, reports have come that the uh, domestic violence and child abuse were increased during the lockdown period or during this pandemic. And Google also have announced like 75% of the growth in the internet searches for the domestic abuse support. And the next thing is the changes in the lifestyle. Naturally, the lockdown has created a lot of changes in our daily habits. As uh, Bhima was telling, the sleep disturbances. It's not only for the COVID patients, even for the normal us, you know. So during the lockdown, we don't have to get up early. We need to we need not go to work on time. We can log in from home. So a uh, lot of stress, especially for the woman to take care of the family, work, as well as uh, other household activities, all this had an influence in the daily habits. And most of the sleep disturbance are due to the anxiety, depression, and suicidal behavior. And there's a lot of diminished uh, sleep quality. It, because of the loss of uh, uh, quality of sleep, there was a lot of sh short temperness. Okay, because of that, there's a lot of incoherence in the family, a lot of fights among the people. Uh, you would have uh, seen a lot of jokes coming in the WhatsApp, uh, uh, what a husband will, was doing in the lockdown in the home when he was not allowed to go. So we see a lot of funny videos and all this stuff, right? And then eating pattern change, right? We don't eat on time. So, and because of the stress, people started overeating and where they put on weight and there was not much of activity naturally obesity has increased and you could have seen the funny pictures that after lockdown the people were so fat they were not able to come out of the door of the house so such kind of habits have taken place and some areas they were increased in the appetite also where there are people uh, with psychological problems and the advantage of uh, um, changing the habit is smoking, quitting smoking or alcohol. That also was possible during the lockdown for some of them and majority it is not so. And the next one is the individual responses to stress. Yes, not all of us are same. Each one of us is unique in our own way. So our response to the stress also will be different for each one of us. And a study was uh, conducted in Italy, and they found that male gender was very less in risk for these psychological burdens. And another study was conducted in China, where they found that COVID infected patients had increased anxiety, depression, somatic symptoms, uh, were more. Okay. And whereas in the post stress traumatic syndrome, like 96.2 percentage of people were having the increase in the uh, depression level and especially people who are hospitalized with COVID. And then also they have found that there is increased level of anxiety among the uh, people who have uh, infected friends or family members. And next is the social media. So social media, we are all living in the social media. Of course, the webinar is also on that. So you have the YouTube, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And people who were not able to use this also were able to um, work on it. And when this social media started, when the uh, COVID came into the online, 
and uh, started this things everybody started the business to gain popularity everybody became a hero they started posting their uh, videos in the whatsapp facebook youtube and at last it became a, a mass confusion and panic among the people so next we'll move on into the psychological disorders of covid 19 the so first and foremost is the anxiety and depression so let me tell you all of us are undergoing during this we would have seen a lot of patients also about the anxiety and uh, depression so coming to the anxiety what is anxiety people will be are worrying about it or brooding or fear of getting infected by themselves or getting uh, or uh, causing infection to the others and some of the signs and symptoms which we have to look in for the anxiety are uh, nervousness and jittery tremors palpitations chest discomfort and breathing problems sometimes they frequently go to the washroom okay so the people need to be aware of the symptoms and accept that they have the uh, issue and coming to the depression so depression people normally will have a low mood and tiredness and they feel pessimist always having a negative thoughts and very poor sleep and the appetite and they feel helplessness and they feel guilty and they also lose hope so it's our responsibility to tell the people that they should be aware of the anxiety and depression symptoms and then they have to accept it and then seek the help whatever is needed and among the anxiety i would like to mention uh, the uh, important uh, type kind of anxiety which is the health anxiety now we are all uh, anxious about our health what is going to happen so this is leading this is health anxiety is based on the misinterpretation of bodily sensations dysfunctional beliefs about health and illness and maladaptive coping mechanisms or behaviors and because of this health anxiety we have landed up with the harmful consequences excessive hand washing social withdrawal panic purchasing and overspending in resources like hand sanitizers medications and protective masks so we all remember right we were running out of stock for hand sanitizers and vitamin c so this all because of this and so what are the interventions we need to look into it so when people have the uh, anxiety what is that we need to do this is a small tips which you can work it on so you need to before taking a, a major measures or going to the hospital recognize the fear what is the thing and remember that you are not alone okay you no need to have a feeling of insecure and planning the daily routine helps in managing the anxiety and need to divide the time clearly as work and non work timings and need to identify an activity or hobby that brings you joy and you have to perform it and you need to have a breaks which will help you to have a clarity of the thoughts and the other symptoms is the loneliness so when you have a loneliness what you can to do is you have to have a community team where they have where you can have an interactive platforms you know, talking to your friends family or supportive groups and you need to be active in your groups whichever you like and you need to spend time with the loved ones this is a great opportunity during the lockdown where we can have enough time with our loved ones and then being in touch with the friends family and colleagues over the social media or the phone and you can pick up a new hobby and we can learn some new things every day and keep your mind engaged that will help you to reduce the loneliness and very very important is spend down the thoughts and emotions regularly so that it washes away from your mind and then you will be feeling fresh and also you feel the belongingness the next one is which sign which we will be facing normally is the difficulty in concentration a low motivation or a state of distraction so remember it takes time to adapt so that need to be kept in mind it cannot come within like that and you need to pick up a same physical activity like yoga or simple stretches at home and then a good idea of meditation this improves the concentration 
and also very very important thing you need to be very rational regarding your expectations about your own self and also about the others expectation from others also need to be considered because they are also sailing in the same boat as you are and the next is this what we come across is a stress the shoulder so here again you need to prioritize your physical and mental health and you need to exercise regularly eat healthy foods and sleep thoroughly and again the good idea of meditation will reduce the mental stress and the next one is about the interventions for the negative emotions virus a lot of time we will be having a negative emotions with us all right so what you need not do is as soon as you see something you need to google symptoms because google is the one which gives everything to us even god gives or not but people rely on google to get everything in their life so so don't do that don't google uh, uh, symptoms of any disease you need to trust a doctor okay and avoid frequently checking the latest covid statistics that unnecessarily creates a lot of negative vibes in you and then do not be hesitant to seek help because normally people don't uh, seek help because of fear of discrimination or stigma so don't do that and keep time aside every day for breathing exercises and meditation that's very very important to control over the negative emotions and next one is the desperation so we are desperate for a lot of things especially the people who are addict in addiction like smoking and alcohol so they have desperation for cigarette and alcohol or drug abuse and this they have to take it as a positive challenge in engaging themselves in meditation or yoga and they have to distract themselves with the new hobbies or family discussion when you they have the urge to smoke or the drinking and next is the panic and the fear so most of the time we are in this so keep in mind we have to always keep in mind we are not alone and need to be very frank in expressing the panic and the fear and consult the doctor or person whom you trust to share your feelings and something uplifting okay the important thing is the financial strain so lot of people lost their jobs lot of people lost uh, didn't get the salary only 50% of salary they are having so lot of issues which will be dealt i think by the next speaker and here you need to uh, have a financial advisor over the phone and then common platform to discuss what are the new policies government has given for that and also good uh, practice to read about the various in, uh, investment and earning options a lot of online jobs are available where they can earn their livelihoods and the next is about the apprehension about the future yeah this is especially for the people who are waiting to take a job or waiting to join a college or waiting to start a career so this is more and even for the others in the different perspectives and um, it's very common to have the apprehension and panic regarding the future for all of us however worrying does not help so they say if you worry if you get a solution yes then why you have a solution then why you want to worry suppose if you don't have a solution so there's no solution then why you want to worry about that so you need to go ahead with it so avoid speculation and focus on the facts do not believe everything you read confirm your suspicious so this will help us to reduce our apprehension and we need to remember that humanity has seen worse and every time we have bounce back and we will again do that for this also so hoping is the key in this aspect and some of the disorders what we will be um, seeing in this this the psd post traumatic stress disorder and this will be the next alarming situation which will be coming across in the near future and this normally takes place after longer periods of social disconnection and it is associated with increased risk of suicide by 2 to 5 times and people who are affected with the covid all will be undergoing this post traumatic stress disorder soon or the later and they will be very prone uh very less prone to seek help from the authorities due to the few available information or fear of stigmatization or the belief that the symptoms may disappear over time or concern about the cost of the treatment 
alcohol addiction. So if you see the alcohol addiction, so there is a lot in the number of increase of abstinence syndrome in the patients who were suffering with addiction during this pandemic time. And if you see in Bangalore in India, in the psychiatry emergency service, twice the number of severe abstinence syndrome, seizures, delirium tremens, and hallucinations occurred per day after the lockdown. Furthermore, so there is increase in the black marketing of alcohol, consumption of non-consumable alcohol, and even suicide in those suffering from addiction have been reported in India. And if you see um, in, in United uh, Kingdom, there was increase in the tremendous increase in the sales of the alcohol during this uh, COVID times because there was no prohibition of alcohol in those countries. Uh, the patients who are in the recovering or want to recover from alcohol abuse during this period have re reduced access to the services such as alcoholic anonymous groups or prohibited alcohol sales. This all has become a barrier for the recovery and the social distancing, anxiety and the negative thinking in the pandemic situation may again trigger a relapse. And I would also like to um, say that the obsessive compulsive disorder. So people are repeatedly doing the hand washing and uh, people are repeatedly um, cleaning the things and very cautious about the things. What has happened is it, become, it became very difficult for the doctors to identify the new cases of OCD. So we would have lost many new cases because everybody is doing the same thing. So it was very difficult for the doctors for, to identify the OCD cases in this uh, pandemic season. And I'm just uh, going to just review, not in detail about the um, uh, various types of people's uh, psychological issues and the core interventions. I have not highlighted all the interventions, the core interventions I've highlighted. Let's go through it. And the first one is about the COVID positive individuals, okay, in during their quarantine time, what are the issues they have? It's all the same issues what we have seen so far, loneliness, anxiety, panic, uh, PSSD, depression. And what are the interventions? Need to have a communication between patient and family and need to report to the family members about the treatment to the phone and video calls, WhatsApp and email and close monitoring of the uh, mental state of the quarantined persons through smart mode technology and time referral is very important and psychotherapy and psychiatric follow-up post-discharge if needed need to be considered. And this is about the healthcare workers and being a health work healthcare workers who are in the front line, you know, maybe the other people are there, but it is the nurses who spend a lot of time with the COVID-19 patients. And it's a lot of stress for the, uh, all the healthcare persons, but it will be more for the nurses who are in great in number and in the longer duration of um, working. So some of the issues, what they may have is the worthlessness. Many of them have guilt because they see every day a death in an ICU. And they feel guilt that they are not able to save their life in spite of rendering a full support and care for the patient. And work pressure, very less number of uh, uh, staff. And I, I, when I was just talking to my nursing superintendent, she was telling one of her... <clears throat> friend is working in the Dubai and where she has to take care of 100 patients in a COVID ward. It's not an ICU, it's a normal. So it's a work pressure. And and I, I think most of you would have seen the videos how nurses are deprived of the family and being quarantined in the hospital for so many months together and being away the, from their family and living a, a life which is not their routine and burnouts. So depression, fear of infection outcome, uncertainty. So all these problems and coming to the, the core interventions I have put, so support from the higher authorities from the management of the hospital is very, very important and clear communication about the update of the information. And then they have to have a contact with their family and friends and then shorter working duration, regular rest periods and rotating shifts. And they need to be quarantined test again, uh, go on with the duty and PPE and then well equipped isolation for the people who are infected 
and very important thing is the insurance system. And we know a lot of nurses have uh, died and a lot of other uh, professional bodies are trying to help and the government also is just giving an uh, insurance for the family who lost their loved ones due to COVID. And especially when they are the frontline workers. And the very, very important is psychological follow-up for the nurses. It's very important because after this, they may have the post-traumatic stress disorder. So in order to avoid that, we need to focus on that right now. And the children. So no, the many very important thing is the boredom because they are always confined to the house. And they cannot go out. And anxiety related to education. Initially, children were not used to online, but no, but I can say they are in the next generation. They know better to operate all the um, uh, technologies either in the laptop or the mobile than the elders. And there's a developmental problems, irritability, developmental issues, and fear of infection. Some of the things is proper parenting, online and study, and very important for the parents to watch the children what they are watching and how long they are spending time with the screen and what sites they are seeing. All that need to be tracked, and then. Sleep is very, very important. So we need to make the children to do some exercise and some work and make them to have a, a good sleep and proper hygiene practices. And this is something which is was new to me when I was doing the search, I could also read this. My Hero Is You is a book, is for the children for the on the COVID-19 by the, it is uh, given by the United Nations along with the other, um, um, sorry, it's given by the Union Nations along with the other agencies. And this was designed mainly to help children six to 11 coping with the stress and anxiety during the pandemic. And coming to the old age, yeah, they have a lot of, normally they have a lot of psychosocial issues, but in pandemic, it has become much more and they are deprived of their pre-scheduled checkups and follow-ups and they were not able to access their medicines due to travel restriction and lockdown. So, what the interventions is can be is a physical exercise or sessions with telephone, online video, and then other guidance for them, and then drug delivery. And the last one is the marginal, the people who are in the lower socioeconomic status. So they too have a lot of issues, and the interventions are need to provide them a proper accommodation, adequate food and water supply, and then healthcare delivery. I can see a lot of people doing a lot of services. Uh, giving food for the COVID patients, uh, delivery at home, and then giving, giving food for all the uh, homeless people. And that was a wonderful uh, um, help, which is rendered by a lot of organizations and the NGOs and by the individuals too. And then we need to educate them about the social distance, hygiene, and we need to deploy some mental health social worker who can refer to the, them to the psychiatrist if needed. And already people who are having psychiatric problem, what is the impact during this pandemic? Well, that's a, the big thing. So they also lose the routine psychiatric follow-up and the addiction and violence will become more. And we need to give them a structured later therapy, how, what to be done and online um, telephone or online chatting where a lot of support groups are there who can help them in online chat. And then online psychoreduction therapies and proper prescription of medications. Yeah, so this is some of the measures that the United Nations have taken to reduce the psychological conditions of their population. It's a telepsychology, and they have extended the telepsychology by allowing the prescription of the drugs in the appointment via the internet so that there's an expansion of the Medicare and Medicaid. And they also have trained the, uh, made the online training with the experienced trainers to use the tools and resources which are available for them. And the very important thing which I could uh, see is that they have delivered the internet uh, therapies through internet, such as the CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, which is very um, effective for the highly anxious disorders, okay? And they found that it was as effective as in-person and they also felt the cost was very less. And what are the troubles we have in telehealth? Even in our country, we did all the telecounseling and telehealth and telemedicine was uh, very useful in our country too, for many people. The technology was the main issue or the barrier for the telehealth and elderly had the lack of 
familiarity with the platforms and the lower socioeconomic ground they were not able to access it and people who are living in the rural areas also have the problems but still our government has made a uh, effort to give the phone numbers or voluntary organizations or ngos where they can contact and take help for the covid i know many of the it guys in the bangalore have volunteered for this session to uh, help the covid positive patients to uh, identify the place or whatever solace whatever is required uh, to arrange for them a lot of work has been done by the it department in bangalore yeah so coming one size doesn't fit all right we are all unique and each of us uh, are different in one way or the other we are not similar so we cannot have a comprehensive coping manual and tell everyone to have this so we need to have a personal strategies to improve our psychological health so many ways are there for the individuals to have personally improve their well being and nourish meant of the adaptive mindset is very important because it have a positive effects on how people deal with their emotions and in fact stress and loss of life satisfaction increases the inflammation in us and that or causes us increase in contacting the disease so we need to look upon this we need to be away from the stress and very important we need to have a satisfactory life yeah so what are the some of the strategies what you can seeking and reaching okay so when you have some issues it's our responsibility to identify that and we have to take the help immediately as soon as possible and find out what need to be done next and the next thing is maintain social connection yeah this is wonderfully going on people who don't know to use zoom people who don't know to use skype and twitter all the things youtube everywhere we are able to connect ourselves and now the globe is in our hand in the mobile where you can see meet and all the friends and you can see i i also have seen engagements happening in the online marriages are happening in the online and guy will be i have seen one of the engagement so the guy is in us and the girl is holding the the girl, boy's parents are holding the laptop and the guy is uh, in the laptop screen and the engagement is happening so like that lot of things are happening about the celebrations a lot of things are happening in the uh, online and people are able to maintain a better social connection now and even i feel now the old age people have their own whatsapp group and they are able to share and, and they are out of their loneliness and volunteering this is a very very important thing so those who are able to volunteer themselves uh they feel a lot of satisfaction in their life that they have done something to some something to somebody's life so this plays a very important role we may not know what we did but it has an impact on the other person who received it and keeping ourselves committed to other things like hobbies and so this is a very very ideal time for us to develop our passions or their hobbies and the first thing is the music so if you are interested in music you can learn music in online or you can just listen to music to make yourself cool and reading if you are passionate and you have a lot of books you never had a time to read so it's a time to start reading and watch films so you know now in amazon prime even in lockdown they have made lot of movies and i think i've heard one movie only with four characters where they didn't meet each other and they made a very nice new movie and then television you need to restrict it okay you cannot have television all the day and it causes other problems and important thing when you watch a television go for a comedy so which makes you to laugh and it is a stress buster for you and home improvements yes i think most of you have done a lot of cleaning at home since you had a lot of time and that has got and even involving the children and everybody in the home and making a new home for yourself during this lockdown gives a lot of uh, good vibrations in your home and other important thing is um decluttering so whichever you don't use it for one and a half year or two years is better throw it off you may not use it anymore and when you have less uh, luggage more comfort concept so you feel a lot of space and lot of joy in your home and then engaging in uh, enjoyable activities to improve one's mood so if you are good in dancing you need not have a, a partner in fact i saw this in one of the video or it comes in the ad also 
you don't require a partner to dance even with the in front of the mirror you can do a partner dance or a solo dance which makes you feel very comfortable if you doesn't want you can have actually dance with your family members and spend time with them if you are shy then you can do it solo in your rooms an art and crafts this is a very very important thing and um, this art and craft have an impact on the neurotransmitters it regulates as well as uh, corticals it regulates and this increases the neuroplasticity and helps in the um, regulation of the emotions so a lot of arts and crafts can be developed and the next thing is the physical exercise very very important for the mental too so both are uh, hand in hand together okay walking and running can be done so it's now confirm to home how can we do the walking and running so there are a lot of videos which shows an eight figure of eight walking which has a magnetic feel and it's an impact on the body at home itself they draw a eight and then they just make a walking or push ups like this or simple stretches or you have an online and free classes of different sports modalities which you can use or there are a lot of groups which do a uh, um zumba dance in the online for their physical therapy aerobics or the friends join together and do some exercise which becomes a motivation factors and then next other several other strategies is the meditation yeah it's a lovely wonderful thing which is a remedy for a lot of uh, psychological problems meditation so many people will say we have to sit in one place and ideally meditation is good to sit in one place at the same time you will have a more uh, uh, impact on your body mind and soul but uh, for people who don't uh who don't like to sit in one place you can always listen to the meditation music you have different hertz of music so which you can keep which is soothing for you and you can just put it in your ears and then you can enjoy that meditation and uh, uh maybe i will the later part i'll just merge meditation with other aspect which is really good for the health and then coming to the uh, faith and the prayers so this is need to be every day every day we need to pray so that we get a faith and the hope for the uh living and playing and listening to music and we can learn a lot of uh, instruments if you have passion for it if not at least listening to music will reduce the anxiety or stress cooking and baking wow this is especially for ladies and kids it became a uh, big uh, um a uh, platform now so everybody start cooking everything and then they'll be putting in their youtube channels and then a uh, lot of new new recipes and the chills children also are involved husband also is involved in the various recipes making and then cooking so it becomes a fun in the house to have uh, uh, cooking and baking and which also leads to a, a eating of a healthy diet which is need for the art and caring of a pet so they say that because of the covid loss a lot of pets became orphan all the rumors have come but i'll tell you carrying a pet there is a term called pet therapy also because this pets give a lot of love to the person who i mean who take care of them so that's very important and if you don't have a pet if you have a plants that is also a pet plants also uh, listen to our communication it also gives a lot of love to us so gardening this also has boomed up during the lockdown so i can see uh, in the balcony a lot of pots uh, kitchen garden in the balcony or in the terrace as so whatever possible people were able to uh, make use of it and the neg- other things are the yoga relaxation breathing so yoga people who know yoga and a lot of them are started learning the yoga through online and relaxation breathing okay pranayama suppose if uh, somebody says i don't know about yoga and pranayama it's okay then you can go with your deep breathing exercise which will ultimately help you in it and then progressive muscle relaxation so if not you can listen to the some music or uh, the there are online things where it helps you to relax your body in every way the important thing is the imagery this was i was telling about the during the meditation right so imagery so normally we all know students in the classroom will be in their own day dreaming they will be out of the world though the teacher is clear, taking class they will be in their own world but opening the eyes but here you have to do it with closing the eyes that's a difference and this is very helpful for the uh, patients too so as a nurses we can tell the patients to imagine themselves normally we do this in the obg for the guided imaginary for the um, during the process of labor you know during first stage we tell them the guided imaginary but 
now it can be used for others. It need not be a guided imaginary. It is a self one. So you can tell the patient or any of us can imagine something which we love the most. It can be walking with a friend or being in the beach or going in abroad tour or something which you you had a dream and you have not fulfilled that. You can imagine that, but it should give joy to you. Okay, that's called as mental vacation, and you can be as long as you want to be in that state. That's a wonderful thing. And when you sit for the meditation and when you imagine this, it gives a lot of uh, um, impact on your body, mind, and the soul. And I personally practice this, uh, and I have benefited a lot out of this. And important thing is the maintaining a routine and daily plan. So now during this pandemic, we became very lazy. We don't get up early, sleep disturbance, a lot of things. But whether uh, you are at home or something, as soon as uh, you start the day, you do a, a prayer and thank God for giving you a life, a new day. So we need to be grateful for that. And then take bath and dress up as you are going out. So you feel a lot of energy and freshness in handling the day, okay? And management of information. So news is the main important. What information it has to go into your brain is very important. So avoid watching TV all the time. And if you are really in need of knowing this outside world, what is happening, watch only two times a day. So, and don't feed unnecessarily things. And then following the guidelines to stay safe and social distance, very important. If you break the rules, and if you go out during the lockdown time, your bike will be in under police control and you need to pay, pay, do a penalty. So it's again a causing a stress. So can avoid all that. And eating healthy and nutritious diet, which boosts your immunity and you can prevent the COVID. And sleep, this is very, very important. All of us are having a problem with this. So at least minimum eight hours of sleep is mandatory for us. And before going to sleep, you can just uh, um, think about the good things you have done for the day and you need to be grateful for what you have done. And people, especially elderly people who have a sleep disturbance, uh, the aromatherapy can be done. Like you can use one drop of uh, lavender oil in a cotton and keep it under the pillow, which induces a good sleep and it causes a lot of relaxation of the mind. Spending time in the nature, so it has got a, a healing effect. So maybe now they say that they cannot go out. At least if you have one plant in your home, in a pot, just sit next to it. You will feel a difference in that. So very important we need to teach the people is about having the negative coping behaviors, smoking, drinking, overeating, cursing, abusing behavior towards others, because we try to blame others for our own mistakes. That's a human nature. And during this pandemic time, it is more. And you need to teach the positive coping mechanisms, all those things we have already seen. And having a friend, family, sometimes search groups, social groups, and professional. And the very important thing is the self-love. So how many of us love ourselves? We may say that we love us, uh, love us but how do we do? So as, as as you increase your passions or spending time for your own self, sometimes we feel that we are loving ourselves. When some people will say that I don't even have time to do any of this. In that case, how do they do? So what we can do is simply, you can go and stand in front of a mirror and just admire yourself and say, I love you to your own image in the mirror three times. Slowly, you will start feeling a difference in your own self. Coming to the last one, vaccination. So this is very, very important, okay? So a lot of rumors have come, if you vaccine, you will die. If you vaccine, you will get symptoms, all that stuff. So personally, I am vaccinated two doses and it's more than two and a half months for me after vaccination, I'm perfectly all right. And in fact, all our faculty, I mean, all the staff in our hospital are also vaccinated. And um, though some of them got infected, but I'll tell you, they never had a severe symptoms and they never had any severe impact of the COVID. They, they can come, they were able to go through the COVID infection in a very smoother way. None of them had an ICU and they were in home quarantine and then it's because of the vaccine what they have taken. And in some of the hospitals also they've said, they have treated almost ICU patients 500 and they have said that all the patients were either single dose vaccinated or no vaccination. 
So those people were in need of the vaccination. And coming to the concluding of my talk, so I would like to say that laughing is always the best form of therapy. That's why I was telling you, try to laugh, make fun at home and with the colleagues or wherever possible. Or if you don't have anybody, just watch comedy things in the uh, TV or mobile because laughing has got a healing therapy in your own body. And the other important thing which you have to do during this COVID time is the affirmations. That, or you can say a uh, self-talk. I love who I am and what I, I do. So every day when you go into the negative feelings or anxiety or fear or something, you can say that I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm love, I'm joy, I'm in peace. So keep saying that. So it gives a lot of boosts and positive vibes on yourself. So you get a confidence to go with the flow of the life. And I do write these affirmations. And every day I used to write 15 times, but people who, who were not keen in writing, at least you can just do whenever possible for you. The last one is the gratitude. Um, so gratitude is again the best one. It heals your mind, your body and your spirit and it attracts more things to be grateful for. And I would request all of you, you know, if possible to maintain a gratitude journal. You can help the children also to do start that from their day one now, whichever is possible for them. You need not write so many. Every day you write three things you are grateful for. That I am alive. Because today I'm speaking, tomorrow I don't know what may be happening for me. So I'm alive, alive. or I got a nice food, or I had a chat with my friend, or I could share something, I could help something. So something, three things, it should not be repeated. Okay, and I will tell you, you will feel a lot of change in your own life without your knowledge. And I, whatever I've said in this talk is all what I practice. And I have been benefited out of this. So I want all of you also to experience that. And in the concluding, I can say that though the COVID-19 pandemic have brought a lot of negative impact on us, but it has made us to realize the greatest assets of mankind, like health, peace, love, environment, family, etc. A lot of things. So now we know the value of things, what we have in our life. So Whatever may be the situation, as I started the introduction with a story, accept the life as it is and perceive the things in a different way, you will be able to overcome in a much, much better way. Thank you so much for your patience listening. And once again, I thank the uh, management and principal and, and his team for giving me an opportunity to um, be on this platform and today. Thank you so much. If any questions, please let me know. Thank you, ma'am, for such an informative and knowledgeable session. The session was packed with a lot of information into short time duration. Not only students, but all of us had a good session on COVID-19 psychological impact. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Madam Sir, stop sir. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, on and all. You can watch this webinar and you can follow through rgsa.edu YouTube channel. It's my privilege to welcome our third speaker, Dr. Srimadi S. Vasandagumari, ma'am in this webinar on effect on COVID-19 livelihood. Madam have so many accomplishments in our nursing field. Madam have around 21 years of experience in the field of nursing in clinical teaching, research and administration area. Madam completed BSc nursing in the year 1997 from Umayalaji College of Nursing under Dr. MGR University. Madam completed MSc Nursing in Child Health Nursing 
2005 in Umayalaji College of Nursing under Dr. MGR Medical University, Chennai. Madam pursued PhD nursing degree in the year 2016 from Raju Gandhi Health Science under Indian Nursing Council, New Delhi. Madam have additional qualification. Ma'am underwent MA in Child Care and Education from Alagappa University, Tamil Nadu, 2008. Postgraduate Diploma in Educational Management and Supervision from Annamalai University, Tamil Nadu, 2008. Madam had Certificate Emotional Intelligence Specialist from Middle Earth HR Halton Advanced Management Institution. And Madam have the degree of how to write and publish a scientific paper project-based course from Kosara. Work experience, Madam worked as nursing staff at Sandosh Hospital in 1998 Clinical instructor at Sri Ramachandra College of Nursing, Chennai, 2003. Madam worked as principal at Jiva College of Nursing, Tamil Nadu, under MGR Medical University in the year 2017, and at her teaching, research, and administration services. Presently, Madam worked as associate professor in the pediatric nursing department, Institution of Health Science. Walaya University East, Walaya Zone, Ethiopia, East Africa, till date. Madam got the prestigious award of Dr. APG Abdul Kalam Lifetime Achievement Award in the year 2021, Indo Asian Gale Distinguished Scientist Award in the year 2020. Presently, Madam is the advisor and co advisor in guiding dissertation work examiner, chairperson, moderator for the research project, community project in the Olega University. Madam involved in planning, organizing, implementation of seminars, workshops, and symposium. Madam Adher, the external examiner, PG guide, and research committee member, participate more than 75 international, national, seminars, workshop, conferences, symposium, and panel discussion. Madam presented more than 20 scientific papers and participated in the paper presentation and webinar presentations. Madam, membership of uh, professional society in TNAI, SOMI, PhD Nursing, Teaching Association, World Research Council Aggregation Member, Member of International Research Council. Madam is the reviewer and editor of board member in various national and international journals. And I'm very happy to welcome our dearest speaker on this webinar. Madam is an apt member to speak on this COVID crisis of social and economical impact on COVID-19. Uh, I welcome you, ma'am, to take on this section of our webinar to uh, share your valuable information to our participants. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you so much, Professor uh, Nima, uh, for the very, very good introduction about me. Thank you. And uh, let me start the presentation. Is it visible? Nima, is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Is, is it visible? Yes, ma'am, visible, ma'am. My screen is visible? Ah, yes, ma'am, visible, ma'am, visible. Okay. So, okay. No, no, I'm just as asking, okay. Slides. Is it visible now? Whether my Our slides are visible? Slides are visible, ma'am. Your voice ma are audible, ma'am. Slides are visible, ma'am. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Slides are visible, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you, dear. Thank, thank you, thank you. I'll just okay. start. 
ओके थैंक यू ओके so by by starting it so i just thank for the great opportunity so i thank the management principal and professor neema and faculty members of indira gandhi school and college of nursing india for this uh, humble privilege and uh, we are i'm uh, i'm truly truly privileged and i'm uh, offering my immense pleasure for sharing the board with you all and especially with all the eminent speakers who are before me my uh, bsc alumni my dearies who are sharing the same platform with me and also i uh, convey my uh, welcome and also my thanks uh, to mr chetan who is going to follow me so with this let me start the presentation so it is on social and economic impact covid 19 so let me acknowledge once again the management dean hod faculty of olega university ethiopia for the support and uh, guidance at all endeavors and similarly my uh, uh, immense pleasure and privilege and my uh, whole hearted gratitude to the management principal faculty of indira gandhi school and college of nursing india and also to my co speakers so coming to the introduction as of 2021 the covid-19 pandemic is an ongoing global pandemic of coronavirus disease and it is caused by severe acute respiratory coronavirus 2 so we are facing a global health crisis unlike any in the history worldwide so one that is killing the people and spreading human suffering and opening the people's lives so but this is much more than a health crisis so we all know it is not only affecting the health also it is having a impact on the human economic and social crisis and the coronavirus disease which has been characterized as a pandemic by the world health organization is attacking the societies at their core so its impact has been broad affecting the general society economy culture ecology politics and also other areas which is very much more and more more and more these vastages occurring in the future years too so the social impact of the covid-19 pandemic the covid-19 pandemic has had far reaching consequences beyond the spread of disease itself and efforts to quarantine it including political cultural and social implications so here when you talk about the political impact so that we know we cannot talk more about the political impact because people have their own ideologies and they have their own concepts and uh, we cannot say anything against the government because the government is also taking a lot of steps because this is a crisis and challenging situation which we are we have not we are not predicted and i think 75 years of history we are facing a very bad crisis which is having an impact in all the every areas so we cannot blame anyone so the political impact what it has going to happen is it has raised many questions about the future survival of the regime so here mainly we are going to it is going to affect our civil rights our sovereignty so here m nicolas prisley is the director of world pensions council and advisory board member of the world bank and also a global infrastructure facility refers this pandemic as the greater greater financial crisis that will bring to the surface pent up financial and geopolitical dysfunctions so we all know the political functions are scattered as well as the financial crisis we are facing which is very difficult to bring back to the normalcy which will take a lot of time only with the support of the government nation and uh, public this could have uh, this will get accomplished where we can rehabilitate ourselves to the normalcy later on so this uh, coming to this uh, civil rights and democracy it is affected where we can see the many countries they have banned printing and publishing newspapers because i think a previous speaker also was telling better not to watch the uh, thing we have uh, because psychologically people will get affected if you see lot of news so this uh, particular informations uh, spread spread through the media's only so what will happen through the media's mostly it is going to blemish or it is going to cause any problem with the political uh, issues also will be created because of this and also the we know very well sometimes the hashtag the twitter twittering is happening where the uh, sometimes there may be the remarks for the prime minister from the chief minister uh, asking them to go back and also asking them to resign but that is not possible because we all know very well there may be problems which is where everybody has to be in cooperation and coordination to solve these issues so here uh, in many countries have banned this printing and publishing newspapers mainly to avoid spread of rumors and gossips also to publicize the news unnecessary messages and world peace so when you talk about this the coronavirus pandemic appears to have worsened the conflict dynamics so it is also uh, affecting the world peace it necessitates necessitates a calling for greater international cooperation to address the pandemic so everybody every country has to cooperate together to face this pandemic because it is a global challenge 
So the educational impact. So you know very well the impact is mainly on the education because the pandemic is, has affected the educational system worldwide because the closure of schools and universities has occurred. So these closures have had widespread social economic implications. So we all know very well the impact on the social mobility in children from low income families and also it is increasing the social isolation and also this is also increasing the school dropout rates because we know economically the parents also not able to pay, pay the fees because they are also losing the jobs and the students are not able to continue the uh, education that is happening online or virtual learning that is happening they are not able to pay the fees and many dropout rates are uh, increasing because of this particular pandemic also there is a uh, data that is released by unesco where they are saying the school and university closures due to covid 19 were implemented worldwide uh, in 165 countries so this is affecting over 1.5 million students worldwide accounting for 87 percentage of enrolled learners so we know it's a very bad impact because the complete war is actually on the education which cannot uh, be replaced so these higher education universities also impacted the students by migrating the classes the regular classes and educational activities to the virtual learning and the coronavirus and inequality. So we know low income individuals are affected, poorer families, they are affected and the crowded housing. So where they are staying. So we all know even in India, the Maharashtra area. So the crowded places are having more impact. And also people who are working in low skill jobs like supermarkets, retail stores, and also in the elder care areas, they are facing a lot of issues. And millions of people who are in the low income people, they are not able to access the healthcare facilities. And also they became, many are becoming unemployed. So they are not able to seek the healthcare facilities and also utilize the healthcare facilities because we know this pandemic has become a business even for uh, the hospitals, many hospitals, the private hospitals have made it as a, a commercialized one, seeking more of money and religious impact. So we know very well the impact is in religion in various ways, mostly the cancellation of the workshop services, various faiths, closure of religious activities and services, and cancellation of pilgrimage and surrounding the observances and festivals has occurred. So many churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples have offered worship only through the live stream amidst this pandemic. So people are not able to visit in person to the hospitals and to, uh, uh, to seek the uh, spiritual needs. They are not able to meet the spiritual needs because of this. So coming to the healthcare and COVID-19, which is very important because it has main changes in the healthcare that is including the provider's experience of patient care and delivery of care. So here in this context, I would like to tell hats off to this. Sometimes COVID-19 is very challenging, but still this COVID-19 has made everybody to realize the importance of nursing profession because we you know 2020 was the year of nurses and midwives. But now completely, I think we have dominated, the nurses have dominated the complete uh, uh, country. I mean, all the countries, worldwide and the dominance of, of nursing profession is at par excellence. So with the start of COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare workers, they were struggling because they were not able to meet the demands. Like there was a reduced capacity, increased workload, increased stress, lack of protective equipment. And slowly the COVID-19 changed the perception of patient care for providing for these providers. So research, when they did a research about the patient care, they suggested, suggested that the nurses are more confident in their skills and also in their roles in healthcare team because progress they've improved that. Also, the nurses viewed their profession as essential and felt increased pride in the services, as well as the patients and other healthcare workers also. They gained a better perspective of this nursing profession and pandemic allowed the public to appreciate the nursing profession. As the pandemic progressed, nurses developed a sense of gratefulness and self-reflection because initially they had negative emotions during the initial stages, but later on they went into this particular gratefulness and people are able to accept it and very importantly i'm talking about this in so social uh, impact because we all know so in society the nurses uh, what was the nurses uh, image so totally the nursing image was changed on uh, when this once the once this pandemic was in, it has occurred here so the pandemic has totally changed the uh, image and perception of the people, public about the nursing profession also the healthcare delivery is another aspect of the healthcare because uh, during this pandemic and usually we can see the healthcare providers they're transitioning to provide virtual or telemedicine visits and which is also increasing in place of the traditional visits so the transition is completely successful and positive people are willing to go with the telemedicine are they going for a online uh, consultation but sometimes there is a problem is lack of in-person interaction that is a uh, very important because they wanted to express something to the healthcare workers which is not possible in this context 
and the socialization personal gatherings so it is very important that social upheaval and the stress other stresses are increasing because we human being are social animals so when this is not permitted we are not able to socialize so see looking in the virtual uh, screen it is very much uh, difficult because you know i am working in ethiopia and i am in um, my family is in india very difficult because to see them through the phone on the to use the media and to talk to them many things we may miss and we are also missing the family a lot and lot so now the situation pandemic situation is also made us like that so we are neighbors i think even the neighbors also cannot visit each other relatives cannot visit each other we can only like we are, we are because we are staying at home the government hard us to stay at home and to quarantine ourselves to have a lockdown measures which is very important to flatten the curve but it is also affecting the socialization of the people also personal gatherings also which is not permitted so that is also resulting in social isolation so the domestic violence next one which is very much increasing because we know very well the domestic violence and intimate partner violence is increasing the physical abuse sexual abuse emotional abuse is increasing day by day and this is mainly because of the lockdown because as they are in the house the covid 19 situation lockdown is putting the people into more of domestic violence especially the vulnerable uh, groups the women and children are suffering a lot so they are mostly uh, with the financial insecurity and the stress is increasing and also uncertainty i have led to increased aggression at home also this abusers are able to control large amount of the victims daily uh, their daily life and their daily they are able to control them and they are also making them to dance to the tunes so this is also becoming a problem because we know the people are uh, dependent on the uh, um, household uh, and then that is the head of the family and especially head of the family are going to be the breadwinners who are the males because they have more of, of scopes during this pandemic and females are not able to go out and they are not able to be uh, they are not able to generate the income also the united nations secretary general antonio guterres he is called for a domestic violence ceasefire because that is given more importance because that is occurring nationwide globally it is happening also elderly care so older people need special attention during this covid 19 crisis and their voices opinions and concerns are very important in formulating the responses so less they are not able to uh, they are not capable of supporting themselves in this isolation period also the increased social isolation at a time what is happening is they are not able to meet they are not able to meet the needs also they are in need of more amount of support and discrimination against the older people is occurring the stigma is occurring and also because people are thinking many times we are hearing many stories that the uh, uh, children they are neglecting the parents they are throwing the when the parents are becoming sick they are throwing them out of the house and sometimes the, the if they are died also they are not um, they are not the, the proper respect for the person after the death is also they they are not able to pay the proper respect for the person after the death so that is also happening nowadays so this is also exacerbating the negative stereotypes about the older persons who may be viewed as a weak unimportant and burden to the society so people are more concentrating on the younger generation and instead of the older people because they think they are not needed for the society and also international human rights law guarantees everyone the right to highest attainable standard of health and obligates the governments to take the steps to provide medical care to those who need it and also upholding the right to health including the access to information and key aspect for this particular context so those especially in isolation who is having cognitive decline and who are highly care dependent and who need a continuum of practical and emotional support they would they should be provided through informal and networks maybe families other social networks healthcare workers uh, volunteers caregivers they should support these people and people with disabilities so people with disabilities they are more like to have more amount of co more comorbidities that that is mainly putting them at higher risk for the uh, for the development mainly so this is mainly because they are developing a lot of complications and also they are posed for high risk of covid 19 infection because you know they mainly though they have a social distancing they are not able to because of the social distancing what happens is they are not able to support their needs and people with disabilities are more likely to experience isolation and they they have mental distress because of the pandemic and they face lot of financial crisis because you know the disabilities people are having they are the uh, they generate income from uh, petty petty uh, uh, employment opportunities but now when everything is closed they are not able to generate that and also the women and children with the disabilities are more likely to experience the domestic abuse during the pandemic 
and also the school school closures for the children who are, who are with the disabilities pose a lot of challenges because they are not able to uh, have a social interaction because the school only is helping the children these children to have a social interaction also promotes their uh, psychological and uh, social uh, uh, network is being promoted where the children are getting all the needs the needs are met through this educational institution so that is also affected so they live in poverty they are not able to access the internet and technology especially when they are in the remote learning and also because of the poor living poor uh, low economy and these children also experience variety of social issues and psychological issues because of the school's closures and also they are going in for insecurity anxiety also the development is going for more amount of delay coming to the economic impact when you talk about the economic impact so i have to thank uh, dr baskar uh, mainly for giving me this uh, topic because i think social impact also we can talk economic impact i was just thinking what i will do when i am going to talk about this impact because economically i think uh, we cannot uh, address this issue more but i think i have done some justification especially for the sake of dr baskar i have done some justification related to this because this particular impact is mainly relying on the government and governmental regulation and policies but i i can just tell what is happening okay so here the covid 19 pandemic it has resulted in a turmoil effect on the economy because we know economy is affected so many countries are labeling this as a black swan event some are telling this as a dark ages also and also it is likened to the economic scene of world war 2 so the outbreak had because they have found that already initially 2008 there was one type of economic uh, crisis that was a uh, world war 1 so this is a uh, termed as a world war 2 the outbreak has had a detrimental effect on the global healthcare systems with a ripple effect on every aspect of human life as we all know that sparking fear of impending economic crisis and recession is occurring so many are losing the jobs and coming back and the covid-19 pandemic it has also had far reaching economic consequences beyond the spread of disease itself and efforts to quarantine it so the pandemic caused largest global recessions in the history with more than a third of global population at the time being placed on the lockdown so the covid 19 effect on individual aspects of the world economy mainly focusing on three sectors primary sector secondary sector and tertiary so we all know primary sectors are the industries that is involving in the extraction of raw materials like uh, its main thing is agriculture secondary sectors involved in the production of finished products and tertiary sectors are mainly in including the service provision industries so here we can see the impact the global gdp the grow, that is the, we all know very well the um, the gdp that is uh, that is that is that is more important it has shrunk nearly to 22 dollars trillion as of january 2002 21 during this pandemic so we all know very well it is completely decreased and also the according to chief imf economist geeta gopinath the long term consequences have not fully played out but could be expected to be in the trillions from 2020 to 2025 i think this will create a lot of uh, crisis financial crisis and uh, i i think this is a great challenge because though the covid 19 is going to give a great challenge but the, uh, i think the government will have a great challenge to manage this and face the issues and to resolve the issues so the agriculture so we know this is the primary sector the resilience of the agriculture sector, sector has been tested by this covid 19 outbreak say a global crash in demand from hotels and restaurants because it is all shut down so what happened they are relying on the agricultural commodities now it has been dropped down to 20 percentage and markets have gone a step further by shutting down the flow trades which has impacted the ability to exchange the commodities so even the supermarkets where the demand is more but still the hotels and restaurants are closed so that uh, the scope is also re reduced so this is resulting in temporary food shortages price spikes so we know the high the hike in prices been uh, occurring and also lack of uh, available uh, that is lack of amenities and disruptions in the markets shortage of grocery items and also the food crisis context is increasing so here the countries up to 80 percentage of population are relying on this agriculture as a livelihood so the topic itself is impact what is it going to have on livelihood so totally i think the farmers and agriculturalists are mainly the people who are going to get affected so the disruptions of the food production and the related value chain for example in the form of a reduced availability of critical inputs and because we have a restricted access to the lands markets also it's a catastrophic uh, one that is going to affect the vulnerable populations too so the closures mainly is going to cause a local displacement and also it is going to increase the poverty and food insecurity when there is a production is going to become less so food spec sector when it is going to be there we can see it is going to include the food distribution retailing and also it is putting a lot of strain because where the people are going for panic bullying and stock piling of the food so we all know very well sometimes the food that is been gathered by the 
people so who are in a higher level positions they will get it but people who are in the lower level may not that will not be completely it will not be scattered to them or it will not be uh, mobilized to them so mobilization of the resources to the low income group or the uh, low privileged people under privileged people will be will be affected here so the demand on food product food products is a completely affected so we all know online food delivery is also now being affected and because the demands are more for that and excessive bookings companies are receiving excessive bookings and also sometimes the delivery problem because the shortage is there so they are arriving late or not at all i think we had a very important issue in bangalore recently because the modelist she has uh, there the, the, was there was a problem between her and the delivery boy because of the late it was a late delivery and the late delivery there was many reasons but we even we can say the shortages and now the pandemic situation also can pose these problems and food banks have also been affected because the donations are also reduced so the people in the old age homes who are relying on the orphanages will be affected so vulnerable populations who cannot afford to stockpile so who cannot find who cannot keep the stockings they will not be able to find the food so restaurants and caves are forced to close and we all know it's only a delivery it's maybe online delivery or it may be only a parcel services so these we all know very well as a result of this many of the stores are permanently closed and also the employees also have lost their jobs because of this and petroleum and oil industry so this again i think the viral outbreak already dampening the demand for oil and there was a lot of problem between russia as well as problem between uh, saudi uh, gulf countries and the oil price also is completely it has been increased and it's also having an implication on the global economy and technology industry so uh, mostly the warning about delays to shipments of the electronic goods so there is no delivery of the goods and manufacturing industry only we can see the decline of sales shutdown of factories decrease production decline in turnover especially over the next two quarters it's posing a negative impact on the pandemic on business operations so totally business operations shut down so staffing deficiencies stood out and disruption of uh, supply chains and uh, self isolation policies also have been included supply shortages are being expected to affect a number of sectors especially the panic bullying increased usage of goods to fight the pandemic and also disruption to factories and logistics has been occurring also there is a instances of price gouging which has been fluctuating and increasing day by day and medicine the pandemic has also increased interesting impact regarding the medicine related elements i think we all know very well the pandemic first of all the prices remdesivir how much it was uh, charged the charges for that and also the not availability non availability also was there which also posed a lot of impact on the people standing in the queue and all the more the black market they are selling the medicines in the black market which was very new in this covid 19 pandemic and publishing we you know the pandemic has stopped mostly in many area the dire effect on newspapers has been found out and like many countries like malaysia japan china they have mostly stopped the publications and many books and everything is stopped the publishing area and mainly because they don't want uh, the people the workers to uh, contract the infection and same time also we know very well this particular uh, problem has created a low income and many time the sales are also, also not occurring so the full suspension of the distributing published material and related merchandise has been done and education so what is the economic impact we know more than everything education system and it has been closed so from primary to tertiary education it has been closed natural education system is totally affected the universities are closed so we can see the significant impact on the child care cost for the families with young children so the children are at home and especially people who are relying on the government to get the food every most of the children are going to the schools mainly for the midday meal program to get the lunch from the school the poor school children now completely they are deprived so here also there is a, a existing a wide disparity uh, mostly among the people mostly population with a high income who are able to access the technology and also who are able to ensure the education continuity may mean it is occurring digitally but it is for the people who is going to be low economic or low income i think mostly the school education is totally stopped so we know very well the gross root areas or in the rural areas we can see mostly they are not able to access to the technology and they are not getting the because we have to charge the if you are use the data you have to put money you have to have a, a android mobile and also we have other media especially we need to have the social media what we to we are what we have to use we have to access to that you have to it should be available and it has to they have to have the resources they have to have money for that so many mainly mainly the low income group is completely affected they are not able to access the education it has become totally it has a big this particular covid 19 has affected the education and had complete crisis on the education and also it is also impacting on the undergraduate education also and also the postgraduate research community is completely affected so what happened is the funding 
the funding that was given for other uh, uh, topics completely stopped and now people are non like non covid related topics is being put on hold and they have just gone only for the covid related uh, researchers funding has been given so you know many universities they close the lab so they are not able to go for the researches and dissemination of the research is also not provided because that is very important because that is only helping for the network and opportunities for the collaboration and job speak seek, seeking that is totally disrupted so many people are losing the job and they are not able to get the job and also they are not able to find a new job also so many conferences have moved online so virtual conferences so we all know very very well that is though it is but though it is useful and though, though the continuity of education is there but you all know very well uh, this amenable it's not amenable for proper networking and the informal and uh, means of scientific communication is completely lacking so people want in person and also finance industry how much it is affected affected the communities it has affected the businesses organization globally and it is also affecting the financial market and the global economy including the stock bond and commodity especially the crude oil gold markets everything is affected so here we can see the completely there is a significant economic downturn and uncoordinated governmental responses and lockdowns mainly led to a disruption in the supply chain and lockdown restrictions completely reduce the production of the um, uh, commodities from the factories and uh, so also the quarantine and self isolation policies have decreased the consumption demand and utilization of the products and services so the decline in global stock markets has completely fostered a volatile environment and which is causing a critical liquidity levels so the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry so there is high healthcare cost so we know very well oxygen the supply was not the demand was more also the shortage of protective equipments like the mask and also low number of icu beds ventilators completely which has posed a problem for the uh, which can completely it has uh, posed a problem in the delivery of patient care so healthcare workers who are working in uh, who may work in jobs that is predisposing them to the viral infection and what happens is mostly these these people are going for the significant financial consequences when there is a illness and especially even the go, uh, the in healthcare industry will be affected when these healthcare workers when they are not being protected properly when they are contracting the infection so the shortage of the healthcare workers oh, again it will pose a lot of problem which will increase the uh, increase the crisis means which is going to increase the infection rate the pharmaceutical industry there is a changes because we know the healthcare completely the dynamics is changing and also there is a massive investment in the disease prevention infrastructure and accelerated digital transformation in the healthcare delivery i think pharmaceutical industry is having a very important role because of the vaccine development so they are they are investing a more amount of money now because of our the medicines for the uh, pandemic as well as the vaccinations so nicolo et al he has highlighted that the challenge in the healthcare policy so that is the changes in the healthcare policy is more challenging and also that the clinical manage management also it is having a new evidence that is emerging and day by day we are having different medicines that is coming out and different level of production so it is posing a lot of challenges and investment of finances also more needed resources are more needed in the pharmaceutical industry and also there is a production slowdown and limitation to the supply which is also affecting the revenue it is causing a revenue loss and also it is causing a mostly covid-19 and uh, it's mainly it's affecting the revenue growth so widespread reports of shortages of uh, pharmaceuticals has been products has been uh, evident it is evident to uh, in this particular pandemic and also hospitality tourism and aviation is affected we you know this is a very important business which is uh, procuring lot of finance for many countries so the hospitality and travel industries they are completely they have uh, perhaps uh, perhaps mean more uh, mostly we can say it is a uh, hard like a most hard it because here yeah, the people are facing lot of problem they are not able to travel so mostly the workers who are in the hospitality uh, areas are uh, totally they have stopped so they are not able to come and they are, the, the work is also they have lost the job also so the pandemic has affected with the current occupancy rate so most of the hotels and the lodges are not occupied because people are not visiting the tourism is not promoted people are not going because the border is closed especially so no not able to move from one place to another because of that the travel uh, they have lot of travel guidelines they are not able to move from one district to another so this crisis has totally led to international distortion for the hospitality industry so aviation coming to the aviation the travel industry is grappling with a unprecedented wave because there is a cancellation of the flights postponement of the flights and also there is a drop in demand because we know the government has given lot of instructions mainly for the social distancing and also it has lot of uh, uh, measures it has given lot of measures but still there is a restriction because of unnecessary travel so people have uh, also there is a border closure so because of this the traveling is completely been cancelled 
and tourism. It's mainly depending on the travel. And because of the quarantine restriction, it is not occurring. The fear of airports and other places of mass gathering, so it's, that is also a fear is there. And the fear of illness that is occurring abroad. So we all know very well when the outbreak was there in India, when it was increasing, um, other countries, even I think the IPL was, I think we had a, we were having this uh, match, this cricket match, and that also was stopped. And at the same time, IPL was stopped. And also many countries, they told the uh, foreigners who are here to come back and they were given the instruction to be back because of this. So issues with the cross-border medical insurance and tourism enterprise bankruptcies are increasing and tourism industry unemployment and airfare cost increases and also damage to the image of cruise industry because the ship industry and, and many events and institutions uh, like it has been cancelled, postponed, major events, so e-sport events. So major events are completely uh, cancelled, public venues, park and uh, recreation areas, malls, and institutions completely have been closed. And also because they are the income generation areas, business closures, restaurant sector. So we know the bars and restaurants, it's completely closed and it is only sit down dinners and limited only with the, the uh, only takeout orders and delivery. Similarly, science and technology, the pandemic has impacted mainly on the science, fire, space and technology products and NASA is affected. And also the Europe, European uh, space technology is affected. So the world's leading space agencies completely they halted the production and also they put the space scientist uh, probes into hibernation or low power mode. And also they are only going with the tele networking and retail sector shopping centers around the world is mainly having a problem. So they are also closed down temporarily. So the product demand exceeded the supply and also because of this also there is a lot of problem like the losing of the job, the virus crisis while frightening as a silver lining too. So here the transportation, the aviation, and at the same time, I told you that because even because of the restriction in travel and also the slump demand, many people are not able to travel. Also the significant reduction in the passengers. So I think yesterday uh, I saw a news where the plane was uh, from, I think from Dubai, some plane was coming to India. Only one passenger was there. So the limited number of passengers, the plane is coming empty and uh, cruise lines, so there is a shipping. So completely the cancel sailings after the outbreak and so the bookings and cancellations completely is increasing. Similarly, railways, they started as the rail operation is completely stopped. So because they are so here, actually what happens is the scheduled services is completely reduced. And also real estate and housing sector, which is a very important generation area here also. The real estate industry is facing great uncertainty, reduced house views because people are not like the, which is very important in selling process. And the buyers are booking by other buyers and sellers. They are completely affected. The plans are completely changed. This is also going in a tele. Now people are going with the tele networking and they are trying to go with the contract. So increasingly the sellers are looking for reassurance regarding the health because they wanted the health of the buyers also. Also redundant are mainly just placing a temporary unpaid leave or absence. And it's also having a significant significant impact on the individual's abilities to pay rent, mortgages, and various household expenditures is also increasing because of this, because these people are affected. And uh, information technology, media, research and development. So mostly we can see COVID-19 has left many hospitals in turmoil because they have reached a maximum capacity. Various countries are mainly turning towards the technological solution because none the care of patients. And also they wanted to minimize the risk of the person-to-person -person transmission. So mostly the online uh, teleconferencing. So especially in China, they introduced this tele-response bots. So that is actually fifth generation wireless networks. So here they are utilizing mainly for the purpose of the care of the patients, which is helping to monitor the health and deliver the medicine, medical supplies. And we have seen the robotics was used and also drones that can deliver the medication. And the year also we are using the drones mainly to survey the to see the to see whether how much safety the area is to add uh, mainly to avoid the public gathering the drones are sent even in india and also work from home also that has been uh, adapted and so the demand for uh, respiratory ventilators is actually is becoming, is becoming skyrocketed because of the shortages and government is looking into this and arts entertainment and sports so we all know very well completely it is affecting the correct cultural uh, cultural heritage uh, sectors worldwide and cultural institutions are completely closed down. They closed down the exhibitions, events and performances. It's cancelled or postponed and also temporarily, permanently, many have lost the job. So we know very well the, the people who are into this, the artists and completely they are completely, they have uh, lost the jobs and also they have the contract employment completely been stopped. So the varying degree of warning and financial assistance is required for these people. And sports industry, only we only see the sports major contributor for the economic and social development in our country. So we all know very well the government, you know, so what they say is the political declaration of 2030 agenda is mainly declaring that uh, the contribution sports make to the empowerment of the women and young people, individuals and community, as well as to uh, mainly for the health education and also the social inclusion of the objectives. 
So here, the COVID-19 is having an impact on the sports and physical activity schedules. So the major sporting events at international level, regional level, national level is totally cancelled. They say the Olympics, the first time in history, the Olympics has been cancelled because of the COVID-19. So it is also postponed, which is posing a significant burden. And all the cinema theatres, completely the film, film industries has closed. So we know the cinemas has closed, the festivals have been cancelled, and the film release for the future dates and film production, everything is closed. And also what happened, it is also limited. Now, I, although it is open, it is also going for a limitation. So what happens is completely this particular area is uh, under the loss and television has completely shut down or there is a delay in the television programs also the repeated i think the programs are repeated only because they are not able to oh, because many of the many times we can see the people are catching uh, covid 19 infection so because of that they are limiting the uh, productions and gambling and betting so that is uh, though we don't know about all this but still this is also approaching a lot of revenue for the government so because of the sports fixtures and also because of this the shutdown of betting shops has occurred and the uh, financial crisis also there because it, this is also contributing and video gaming industry i think we all know very well people are isolated and they're sitting at home and because of the governmental regulation so online gaming it has become a lot the so people started to play the online gaming and that is also where it has become a revenue for the many companies and many companies have started the online gaming so also pand pandemic also affected the video game sector to some degree but you know very well so it is affecting the video game sector but still that is also because of the video game that is occurring online game uh, which is having a lot of uh, uh, prospective uh, uh, pro pro prospectiveness and scope now it is the manufacturing production of this uh, video games as completely increasing and also that may be uh, that is also that is also contributing to the revenue but due to the supply chain where the manufacturing uh, tech, manufacturing industry is stopped, the production is stopped because of the, the delay in releases and also there is a scarcity of the video gaming programs. And also youth, when you talk about the youth, what is their contribution? We know they are vulnerable population who is uh, like, uh, who, who aids the public. They are creating the social awareness campaign among the communities and they are critical to the limiting the virus spread because mostly we can see they are the people who have impact on the public health society and economy at large because the younger generation they are the more important they are youth they are the uh, um, they are the important persons who is going to be a very important citizen for the society who is going to be a productive citizen for the society so in terms of employment youth are disproportionately when they are unemployed and those who are employed they are mostly working in the informal economy gig economy or precarious uh, contracts where they don't have the uh, jobs now and also they are in the service sectors of the economy so mostly what happens is their economy is totally affected so we know very well youth are the one they, they can generate more amount of because they have more energy they can be more productive uh, because of this particular uh, uh, pandemic so because of that they are also losing the jobs and families and indi indigenous people. So family uh, life across and indigenous indigenous people's life are affected because of the closures. So they are vulnerable at this time due to because mainly there is an increase in the rate of communicable, communicable and non-communicable diseases. So not only uh, COVID-19, we are only concentrating on the COVID-19. People who are aged, who, people who are having the comorbid illness. So they are also having lack of access to the essential services. They are not able to go for that. And also absence of culturally appropriate uh, health care. And uh, they are not able to get uh, medical appropriate me medical facilities, accessibility, availability approachability everything is affected so they are economically affected they are not it's because they are dependent on income from the broader economy so that is like production tourism handicrafts and employment Mams got disconnected. Yes, ma'am. Uh, network issue, madam will be joining. Uh, 
uh, today in this section, uh, Madam uh, Dr. Vasinda Kumari, ma'am, from Wayala University, Topia, has given a very detailed information uh, regarding the political impact uh, that has been started from Asian. We cannot do anything. And uh, she told about uh, this is a very great uh, financial crisis uh, that was given by uh, Nicholas Words. And Madam has insisted uh, related of uh, world peace. We have to maintain a world peace uh, by an international uh, uh, co cooperation between the nations. And uh, uh, he, she has uh, given detailed information regarding the educational impact, coronavirus and inequality, healthcare and COVID-19 impact, socialization and personal uh, gatherings, mainly the woman and child uh, domestic violences in the home, a need of the uh, elderly care, uh, COVID-19 situations, and people with uh, more uh, disabilities and comorbidities was uh, uh, insisted by Madam uh, uh, Session. And Madam has uh, given the economic impact. So the economic impact uh, uh, coined the word as black swan event as a World War II or a dark side for our international and global health care system. And Madam has uh, given uh, information regarding the world economy can be divided into primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors. And Madam have uh, given so many uh, messages of global challenges in the agriculture, in the field of petroleum, in the field of uh, uh, health care and the medicine and the pharmacy, education, finance industries, healthcare uh, sectors, information and technologies, and medias, and family, and indigenous system of medicine. So ma'am, given uh, detailed uh, information and disseminated uh, uh, very good knowledge regarding the social and economic impact of COVID-19. Hello? Madam, can you hear me, ma'am? Ma'am? Ma'am, ma can you hear me? Hello? Ma'am, my voice is audible. Ma'am, can continue the session? Hello? Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you hear me, ma'am? There is a uh, net issue, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. You can continue, ma'am. Huh? Hello? Uh, yes, ma'am. You can continue, ma'am. I can hear. Hello? Uh, yes, ma'am. You can continue the session, ma'am. Hello? Hello? Nima, hello? Ah, yes, ma'am. I can hear. You can continue the section, ma'am. Hello, Nima. Hello, hello. No, no voice. Hello, hello. I'm not able to listen. Hello. I can hear your voice, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. There is a problem. Okay, I'll come with this. 
Okay, shall I continue? I'm extremely sorry. I'm, ex yes, I'm extremely continue. sorry because uh, this is Ethiopia. Is that uh, yes, we have a challenging context? Okay, I'll just continue. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Into the so we pulled about the unemployment issues because the lockdown in India it has put. Ten left ten men, ten or uh, tens of millions of migrant workers unemployed. So the pandemic, economic impact is completely increasing. It is causing a lot of sexual exploitation, child marriages, leaving the women and girls in fragile economies and refugee context, especially for unemployment issues and households purchasing power and food prices and food availability, local market and all that jeopardizes the access to food in the most vulnerable countries because of the unemployment issues and also the gender gender issues. So that is very important because. Women have been heavily affected by this pandemic recession. So mostly we can see. I have seen one beautiful uh, uh, WhatsApp uh, message where I could see uh, to uh, that is for the stress. You have to let out the stress. So immediately I can see a lady. She is opening the door. She is asking first the first child is she is asking the first child to go out. Second child she is showing the second two fingers and third child a small one that is also walking out of the door. And then fourth the husband is also walking. So I mean the four is going. She is shutting down the door and she, now she is feeling relaxed because that means completely the household activities has increased for the ladies and because they became they they became unpaid paid workers. So the household work is more improve or increased because of the uh, COVID situation. So the gender the women gender is more affected because of this particular. the covid 19 issue where they are sitting in the home and they are more and more the workload is been increasing for them because of the domestic activities so the for, for many families uh, school closures social distancing measures have increased the unpaid care and domestic load of the women and was more over the home and that is also making them to get less able to take a balanced or paid work so they are not paid also and the situation is worse in developing economies where a larger mostly we can see we can see here the Larger group of people are employed. They are employed in the informal economy, so they are not able to get the protection. So health insurance is not available. Paid sick leave is not available, especially women. They are in the crisis because they are mostly having an informal economy where they are not having a permanent job or they are they are only in a temporary job or they are having a petty jobs. But this is in this particular COVID-19 pandemic has completely they have lost the job and they lost the security. So women, informal workers, migrants, youth, and the world is uh, poor. The most uh, poor people they are the. Uh, vulnerable groups and who are susceptible to the layoffs and job cuts and the women are losing their livelihoods faster than the men and have fewer alternatives to generate income because they are at home and they are not able to generate the income and no security for them as actually because they have to depend on someone so coming to the conclusion because we have seen sectors so the primary tertiary uh, secondary and tertiary sectors which is also gen uh, very important in generating the income and also here also we can talk about the elderly people and the disability people who can also because they are also affected the economy is completely getting affected because we know the loss because the economy the expenditures the uh, the medical expenditures are increasing for the old age people because they are prone for many co comorbid illness complications and also this is also posing a lot of financial crisis at homes household household economy is also affected which is also contributing to the national economy similarly we can see the children are affected and also the comorbid illness is increasing because people are not able to access for other uh, non communicable diseases they are not able to access the health care because only covid 19 a concentration is going on people because having a fear to go to healthcare industry to seek because of the contracting of illness also and also later on we can see even other uh, areas like uh, um, disability people mostly we can see uh, mostly the physically challenged people and i think they also have the low income generations like we can know the booth we can see in the telephone booth and also there may be in some shops these people are engaged for the activities and also the music troops now completely as it is stopped even they are also in a the economic crisis is also affecting them also which is not been because socially they are affected as well as emotionally economically they are also deprived so coming to the conclusion the covid-19 outbreak affects all segments of the population and is particularly detrimental to the members of the social groups who are in the most vulnerable situation which is continuously affecting the population so early evidences indicates that the social and economic impact of the virus that is been uh, and it is also being uh, born disproportionately which is affecting all the people especially vulnerable one so the pandemic impact called for resilient and strong leadership healthcare business government and wider society immediate relief measures need to be implemented and adjusted for those that may fall through the cracks 
and also the medium and long term planning it's very important to balance this and re-energize the socio economic measures following the crisis so it is mainly depending upon mainly depending upon the national organization and international organizations the government so they have to take a lot of steps and they have to put a lot of planning and sector by sector planning is very very important and effective decision making on the number of critical social and economic issues including the designing inclusive stimulus packages they have to put a lot of stimulus packages so we all know very well nowadays the packages have been given by the government mainly for the people the free mobile they can uh, give the mobile recharge because that is that, that is also helping to maintain the social interaction they can uh, use a mobile and they can i think uh, the previous speaker dr manjuri was telling so they can uh, go with the online uh, having chatting also could be done so for this they need economy they need money and also this social social interaction should be promoted so i think the government is also giving some packages in some areas so this is very especially for the school children mainly to continue the education so the effective decision making on the number of critical social economic issues is very important that needs the stimulus packages and preventing the global debt crisis because we have the economy the debt is increasing and supporting countries who who needs who needs fund in special situations and protecting science technology and institutions for an effective response because we have to go with more of uh, uh, productions also we have to go with more of uh, researches to to tackle this particular uh, pandemic and working together to build back better and achieve the 2000 the 30 agenda for sustainable development goals mainly it is going to uh, promote it is going to bring back the social and economical issues the resolution and it's also improve this social and economic development so thank you so much for the opportunity given and i think uh, if there is any questions you can ask me because i think more than me i think the government really can answer the questions for this particular topic rather than me because it is uh, completely governmental uh, uh, actions and the policies and plans what they put but as a health care because these type of things are very important so that we can take this kind of uh, knowledge and that could be help to to seek lot of uh, like a lot of uh, fundings and also to help the people because we are also becoming lot of donate donors nowadays and also we are becoming volunteers as a healthcare personnel i think this will be helping us to also you know, mobilize the resources from the government how to do that so when we know all this we can also concentrate on all this and we can do the complete uh, uh, education on the intervention strategies how to promote the social and economical development for the people in the cover com- the particular covid-19 context so thank you for the opportunity given i'm extremely sorry and i think uh, sorry for the interruption that has occurred because i think uh, this I, i was very, very much worried because very much ready to take uh, the webinars but only problem is uh, related to the net issues network issues any time it can occur and um, thank you thank you for the opportunity i thank once again i thank the management uh, which has taken a very important uh, efforts to organize a webinar which is very important need of the hour because people are sitting and they can the sharing of the knowledge is very important and crucial during this period because we should not uh, waste our time so our time should be utilized and we have to improve our knowledge and skill during this particular period and that has to this particular covid-19 uh, context should be a challenging one for everyone i uh, my whole hearted thanks to dr elakwana baskar raj Okay, so he, I, because he has given the great opportunity you know very well i'm in this situation where I, I, there may be problem also but still as uh, he has invited he has invited me as a speaker for this i need to give him a very much uh, uh, my heartfelt thanks as well as a great applause to the institution and professor neema and other faculties also for your great organization and also best wishes for the institution in the future endeavors too thank you so much thank you ma'am uh, dr vasta kumari ma'am from wayala uh, university utopia thank you for your uh, great explanation you have uh, cover all the information related to social and economic impact on covid 19 i hope all our participants are uh, uh, gain knowledge related to this uh, topic thank you very much ma'am uh, for your uh, presentation thank you ma'am so okay. very shortly we will go with the next presentation i call uh, mr sagar to come forward and uh, introduce the next speak okay good afternoon one and all uh, this is mr sagar associate professor um, community health nursing indira gandhi school and college of nursing uh, today you all know why we all have gathered here virtually 
that is international webinar on impact of covid-19 on livelihood organized by indira gandhi school and college of nursing munsiganj so it gives me an immense pleasure to introduce today's resource person mr b chetan kumar sir he is assistant professor from apollo college of nursing hyderabad telangana if he see his educational qualification he completed his bs nursing in the year 2004 from dr ntr university of health sciences andhra pradesh and he has completed his ms nursing in the year 2013 from bharati vidyapeeth deemed university pune maharashtra and now if you see his experience after completing bs nursing he worked as a staff nurse for 2 years and after completing ms nursing in 2013 he is working and worked as a teaching faculty in various nursing institutions and he is also one of our faculty previously and now this day of covid 19 pandemic knowledge regarding covid 19 has become essential so i request our resource person mr b chetan kumar sir to deliver his valuable thoughts and enrich our students knowledge thank you sir sir please uh, you unmute your uh, am i audible to you all yeah, yeah yeah now it's okay sir is it okay or you want me to raise my voice sir sir is your voice uh, is my voice audible to you all uh, yes sir yes sir is it okay is it uh, okay sir you can continue sir yeah okay and good afternoon one and all uh, i am as i have been uh, introduced by mr sagar i think i don't need much more introduction because i am the ex faculty and i still feel that i am a part of part and family of uh, indira gandhi group of institutions where uh, uh, the uh, where my uh, mentor dr baskar raj sir uh, always drives me with his uh, innovative ideas and all so without taking much of uh, your time so let me rush to the topic because like uh, i have seen uh, the eminent speakers who have uh, given their valuable uh, speech and uh, sessions before me have completed the entire topic i i am i'm really now in a sort of a confusion of what i have to speak so my uh, my seniors and my beloved uh, speakers have completely grabbed all of the information which i am going to uh, say so uh, even though like uh, uh, let me uh, keep uh, l- let me throw some light where we have to put the thing Uh, which we usually know and which we usually follow, even though they are a uh, very minor things, which we usually uh, what to say that we ignore. Like for example, there are few things like uh, regularly frequent changing of the mask and regularly, even though like if at all we are being we are we are being taught and learned and being practicing how to uh, keep ourselves uh, uh, free from the infection and getting isolated from the infected areas and inf- infected people and all those things. so there are few minor mistakes which we are being uh, doing uh, like what we say like uh, without uh, without a proper notice or without any idea which is the causing sort of uh, spread of the disease with uh, among the community and among the uh, people in the family and friends and relatives who are really the close ones so uh, let us uh, move on to the topic so these are the things which we usually follow like uh, what do you understand by the uh, by a covid which uh, which can be easily prevented like as we know it is a very serious condition or a disorder syndrome whatever uh, we may call in different parts of the world and different parts of the uh, academic or uh, what we say in the literature uh, in, in simple way it is it, it is very hard and it is a very tough condition which is not easy to get recovered and but it, uh, but at the same time it is very easy to get prevented and it is very easy to keep yourself free from the infection to make yourself healthy individual and prevent yourself being infected and also to a uh, spread infection so these are the few things which we are up to do and which we are uh, usually being followed from the start of the pandemic uh, from the last uh, march 21 2020 where uh, the things have been made uh, a mandatory things like uh, we, you have to maintain a social distance where it is around of 2 uh, meters or 6 uh, feet at least and you have to wash your hands regularly at least for 20 seconds and uh, if it is not uh, assured that you have to use only the uh, medicate emollients but it can be uh, you can 
even use uh, normal soap and water because uh, using uh, high advanced or uh, medicated emollients is not uh, easy for each and every person because due to the pandemic as uh, our uh, senior may, our previous madam so our previous uh, speaker to have already arrived that the one of the most uh, bad effect or negative uh, effect which has been uh, which uh, covid has given to the entire universe or the world is the financial crisis so normal soap and water are also effective in preventing the Uh, spread of infections and the thing is that avoid shake hands or contact uh, uh, try to uh, try to avoid all sort of contacts that may be hands or hugging or whatever the regular routines which are being followed in each and every person's daily routine because each and every person has got their own like for example i greet my friends by hugging and some people greet their friends by shaking hands and some people have their own thing so let us like uh, let us stop uh, Uh, uh maintaining the proper contact which would uh, which would take a chance of spreading the infection and next thing is the most important thing is this, as uh, the covid virus is uh, known to spread through airborne or uh, airborne so what we have to do is we uh, 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 try to uh, sneeze in your cup of palm or into tissue so that there would be a lessen chance of spreading of the virus into the uh, uh, atmosphere and it's better to stay at home uh, when uh, when you are suffering with uh, fever and cough because that may be a chance that may be a symptom of uh, the covid pandemic so i would like to give some things which uh, we have to keep in our mind the first thing is as uh, uh, as the media as whatever the things now which we are uh, going to our facing in the day to day life the one thing we all have in our minds is getting panicking because of the situation so the first and foremost thing which would help us is you should not panic uh, you should not panic as uh, it, uh, as we know the corona virus has taken everybody by alarm as and also the internet is being filled with information about the virus and its spread and many of our uh, many of it are also wrong it's not like uh, there are various articles and various things which are being Uh, viral nowadays due to the electronic media it's not that everything is uh, everything is true of the internet as we know even the wikipedia which is the most served uh, most served academic uh, academic uh, what is a website in the entire world in the entire world even that can be edited by a person who is registered into a company website or a normal website so it's not it's not too good to believe each and everything that comes across the internet and through your whatsapp or whatever the medium of uh, communication which you have so most of the time what happens is the panic leads to people taking wrong and ill uh, ill informed decisions if you follow basic personal hygiene along with the precautions it would be very less likely for you to catch the disease and it's also important to keep up to date with the reliable information and propagating wrong information can further fuel the panic among the people and also have the adverse effect on the efforts to contain the epidemic and next thing is you should not uh, try not to touch your face because medical advisors from who has reminded has reminded us from time to time and again uh, not to touch our face nose and mouth too often because this helps to reduce the chances of catching the virus as infection from your hands not reach the nose Our mouth from where it can infect the body. Keeping your hands clean will also help to reduce the chances of the infection uh, spreading any further. And try not to uh, travel unnecessarily. Only travel when it is really necessary. Because the airports, airplanes, and also the other modes of travel, like uh, what, uh, whatever the modes of travel that may be, that may be through waterways, airways, trains, roadways, and whatever the things. There are. most chances and there are more likely chances to catch an information uh, infection so it is advisable not to travel unless absolutely necessary if you are traveling you should take the required precautions and get yourself screening on landing and it is important to uh, important you to inform the uh, local authorities or travel agencies or travel line uh, travel lines that may be air or the bus or whatever the mode of travel you are uh, traveling it is important to uh, uh, get your self screen and to submit the screen now if you, if you see if, uh, if at all we are nowadays we are being seen that if at all you are traveling by air you have to fill in an information chart or information thing uh, a sort of uh, written affidavit or a concern where you give yourself a concern that 
you are free from the disease and you are free from the symptoms that may cause covid this is this has become a part of the airline travel which is going to be uh, which is also being followed by the roadways uh, in the form of getting e passes so if at all you are being traveled so try to fill up this uh, e passes uh, get uh, get your e passes filled so that uh, you are you will be regularly live tracking Uh, so that you are, if at all, if, if at all you are coming across of any any person or any situation or any area where the cases are more, the government it, it it informs or it alarms the government so that you will be given a sort of preventive measure. So it's better to uh, fill in up of all the e-passes and also to give the consent and to notify the uh, government healthcare agencies about your uh, regular travel schedule. and as is do not go to the crowded places because the one most important thing is that there are uh, when there is more crowd there is more sort of infection infected air the that may be of uh, suspected with uh, uh, covid uh, covid virus so it is better not it's better not to travel to the crowded areas and to avoid the crowded places like not only the crowded places do not include only the religious places but also the functions and also the uh religious and uh, really, uh, are also the uh, what to say the familial and the other uh, functions are get together and one more thing as we have uh, as we have discussed earlier that is don't believe everything on internet because the internet is filled with the information about the symptoms and cure available for coronavirus do not believe anything unless it comes from the reliable this uh, sources or reliable medical practitioner or reliable websites like uh, who if you are uh, well aware of the uh, uh, websites uh, browsing nowadays you can find each and every uh, or to say every information related to uh, corona pandemic on the who website the uh, the officers and the underlying uh, employees and underlying uh, people they are uh, up to, uh, they are giving the information up to date on the website so it is it is better to find out the information to cross check the information which you have come across through the uh, regular uh, verification through the uh, medical resource uh, medical resource website and do not fall uh, in in a trap yourself or propagate any information that is not from the reliable resource and the next thing is not seek the alternative treatment now if at all uh, You, if at all you are uh, very aware or uh, if at all you are uh, seeing the tvs and uh, the media nowadays you might have come across mr uh, anandaya uh, who is uh, who is giving the alternative medicine for corona virus he has been giving the medicine for the past one year where the place has uh, not noted even a single case of uh, corona virus for the past uh, for the past two years it's uh, near the nellu district in krishnapatnam so like uh, uh it, it has not got any medical evidences that it is being cured but there are there are very less things so when you are uh, seeking any sort of alternative treatment you you have to either you have to follow one sort of treatment or you, you don't have to uh, compile all the sort of treatments for example there are in in various areas of uh, uh, what to say in the tribal areas the people are following the double or triple travel like uh, they are following the allopathic treatment which is a normal medicine which they are taking and they are also even following the ayurvedic and other modalities of treatment where the people are facing un uh, uh, unnoticed or unexpected death so it's better to follow only one sort of treatment if at all you have started taking treatment from the allopathic let it not be discovered and if at all you are not going to allopathic it, let it be continued with any homeopathic or any sort of yunani or any sort of alternative medicine second and next thing is that uh, do not take any sort of antibiotics because it can be easy to resort to taking the antibiotics lying the uh, lying in your medical kit as we are uh, uh, this usually happens with the people who are uh, from the medical background we have some intentions like uh, intentions like uh, why to uh, approach a doctor it's better to have a few uh, uh, medicines which are regularly lying in our medical kit and in our houses and in your in our uh, purses and wallet so please do not try to suppress the symptoms because suppress symptoms or suppress any sort of uh, uh, the suspected uh, signs of the condition because what happens if at all you are taking for example uh, I, we have seen a uh, few 6 to 8 cases in software uh, in software companies of hyderabad where a person 
uh, where a senior HR was suffering with uh, COVID symptoms, he was like he was suffering with a sort of mild headache and cold. He started taking Sinaris, where he he got relieved from the symptoms. Later on, uh, for a few uh, for a few uh, few hours, and later on they have started worsening of the symptoms. When the person was uh, when the person was taken to the um, hospital after three days of starting of his symptoms, he was uh, diagnosed as positive. And in meanwhile, he has around he has met around the people for around eighty to ninety people uh, per day. So for three days, he has met around three hundred people. Where these three hundred people are from different parts of uh, Asia and Telangana, where they have spread more and more infection. So please do not take any sort of medications, not only antibiotics, any sort of medications, unless you are confirmed that they are not the symptoms of corona pan, corona virus, or corona disease. The next is uh, keeping off the flu shot. You see, this is the same as the taking the medicines, the counteraction medicines. Like symptoms of the flu and COVID are very sim, uh, very similar. And when the symptoms uh, of these two get overlap, and this may complicate the diagnosis, and so it is important that you take the uh, flu shot only to reduce the chance of catching the flu. But don't take these flu shots thinking that this may help you to protect from the coronavirus. So next we'll see. Uh, I have uh, uh, what is it? The categorize the uh, control measures within three things. That is people who are infected and who are uh, who have recovered and who are not infected. So let us see one by one. Uh, as there is uh, uh, as there is lack of time, please uh, do be patient. I'll rush off the topic. We just cover the important things which are to be uh, putting on to more light. The first thing is that as we have discussed earlier, it is to practice the good hand hygiene. The hand hygiene does not uh, only consist of washing your hands; it also consists of using the regular sanitizers, uh, regular sanitizers, not only before and after touching the surfaces or unwanted things, but also while you are practicing your own health hygiene activities like uh, wearing masks, removing masks, and touching the uh, unwanted things or touching the things which are completely with the dust and uh, uh, the, touching the things which are not being touched for a longer period of time. And you have to practice the social distance, which you are regularly. Uh, I guess uh, regularly you have been tired of listening as a, a true collar ringtones and all. And next thing is that wear a mask. You see here, the wearing a mask is not a simple thing. It is the most important thing which you have to consider, which which you have to make as uh, as a part of your routine. When we see, you see, uh, like it is very clear that uh, it would be better. Uh, the WHO has released. Uh, uh catch in that to make uh, use of sanitizer as you are a regular in your regular uh, masking routine like whenever you are using your mask or whenever you are removing your mask it's better to wash it's better to clean your hands with the sanitizer that would prevent you to fall into the risk of getting infected and it's it's better to understand your risk why you have to understand your risk as we have seen our madam uh, previously they have explained the associated disorders like when we see the common associated disorders are starts with the lung infections and uh, uh, de depress or deprive your lung activity lung functions and also your cardiac function so if any person is suffering with a, uh, with a diabetes say long term illness like uh, diabetic mellitus hypertension any sort of uh, uh, cvs that is coronary vas uh, vascular disease or any sort of uh, uh, what we say Uh, respiratory disorders. So it's better for those persons to keep yourself or to keep watch on the symptoms. If they are getting once uh, worse, then it's an important alarming sign that you have to approach a medical personnel to prevent or to protect yourself. And not only protecting yourself, protecting the people or loved ones uh, surrounding you to fall as a bait into the hands of COVID infection. And you have to get vaccinated. Most of the people, even like. uh we have seen uh, we have run a, uh, a vaccine drive in areas of uh, in, in rural areas of rangarid district and in rural areas of uh, uh, andhra pradesh and telangana there we have found that most of the people who are really well educated have uh, ha have not extended themselves to get vaccinated because of false information which they have been coming across through the internet and other sorts of media so it's not that it is uh, the government has been taking a lot of uh, steps and lot of uh, uh, measures to make the vaccine available to each and every person because 
please do not uh, skip your dose please do not skip your vaccine because don't uh, don't listen to the hearsay and please be confident please be healthy it is it, really worse to get uh, uh, it's really uh, worse to get uh, uh, covid than to uh, suffer from the small minor things which you uh, which you will suffer due to the vaccine like for example most of the people are worrying that if if the person is getting vaccinated you will be having some sort of fever and some sort of body pains for a day or two so which is a very minor thing it is better to face those small symptoms only that is also very rare people are getting uh, getting uh, suffer not all the people even i have got my vaccine for the uh, uh, i have got my two doses of vaccines uh, being done i never had a single symptom of uh, like headache or body pains or any other things but in the same family my mother when she has gotten vaccine she had um, a fever and body pains for around 3 days so you see uh, it, it's not like every person's immune system is uh, equal and it's not like everything so it it, it, it is not uh, it is not good to uh, think that if we are getting vaccinated we have to face body pains and they keep are really unbearable but just think or be, uh, but just uh, just uh, uh, come to know the problems which are going to be faced if a person is being attacked by covid virus so it's better to get vaccinated than suffering from the uh, than suffering from the covid virus and next is you have to take care of uh, your physical and mental health uh, uh, because reducing the mental the mental stress and uh, regular exercise and healthy diet with a with a good amount of quality sleep would make you healthy that could support your immune system to to make uh, to get free from the infections and now we'll see about the people who are regular uh, who are infected you uh, uh, the people who are infected it's better for them not to uh, go for work and uh, school and other public areas unless to get the medical care and try to avoid the public transportation and get isolated self isolation is the most important thing which our government and which the many agencies are being uh, done like if at all you might have uh, come across the, the news that if at all uh, previously in, in the last year if at all we are traveling from one uh, one state to another state the state government is has uh, allotted a few quarantine centers where the people would not directly go to their homes or their residences they are put into the isolation centers for a, uh, for a week or two when uh, after the complete of uh, the completion of uh, this quarantine period then only they are all, uh, allowed to get into their residences so it's better to have self isolation and uh, avoid the avoid the common space like uh, you see if at all in, in a family say in a family there are husband and wife and grandparents and also parents so if her husband is uh, if the husband has got affected it's better for him to have self isolation and not to share the common rooms like common halls common dining halls and common kitchen it's better to um, uh, to self isolate himself and to avoid the share, uh, to avoid the common spaces and to maintain a proper distance and also uh, regularly uh, clean the touch surfaces Uh, and the uh, common rooms like bathrooms and door knobs which the patient is coming across into the contact and and we have to uh, and it, it, it uh, and most of the people are not aware of using the pulse oximeter because a common thing which has been uh, stuck into the uh, minds of the people that the, nowadays it has been a fashion that each and every person is carrying the pulse oximeter in their pocket without knowing how to use and when to use like there was like there was a condition where we have come across in uh, in a uh, let me uh, pull up an example from uh, don't think that i am dragging the software people because i have been coming across those people for the past one year where the people are carrying the pulse oximeter but they are not aware uh, to uh, how to uh, plug into the, uh, plug their finger into the pulse oximeter and to check it so unless you are advised please do not send more and more and do not uh, if at all you are not aware of uh, using the equipment medical equipment please do not go in there and if at all the person is uh, suffering or if at all a person has been attacked with corona virus it's better to have uh, to check the oxygen levels regularly because it would it would show the uh, the declining oxygen levels uh, would be an alarm sign that the uh, condition of the patient is being worsened and regularly monitor it is very uh, it's very common it is very known fact to everyone nowadays that if the uh, oxygen saturations are falling below 94 
then it is uh, there are around lots of uh, proximity and chances that the person is falling under a uh, virus so and next is how to protect yourself while caring with the covid patient nowadays it's, it has been uh, well known that using of pp kit so please uh, uh, learn how to use the pp kit most of the people are draining and suffocating the pp kit and uh, people who are not aware how to use the pp kit are being suffocating and getting additional worse and things because like if you should be healthy to care the patient if at all you are also feeling if at all you are also falling sick or ill so who would be responsible for caring the patient with covid so it is very important that even you have to uh, be careful how to uh, you have to take up uh, necessary actions and preventive measures to protect yourself and also to protect the uh, to take care of the patient and you have to keep your hands away from your face and please do not uh, uh, touch the uh, use the same hands without cleaning from one surface to another surface when you are coming in contact with the person who is infected with the covid and regularly wear wear, uh, wear, uh, wear a face mask and make use of sanitizer as your regular routine and you have to clean your home frequently with your uh, uh, and also uh, reg uh, regular you uh, regular cleaning of household cleaning uh, methods and household uh, uh, equipment and uh, uh, equipment and also the utensils or things which are being regularly used are to be cleaned uh, carefully and you and you should also be most uh, more careful with your laundry because laundry if at all uh, you have to wash the laundry which is soil linen which is used by the patient separately they should not be mixed and you have to avoid the direct contact with the sick person and the body liquid fluid uh, you have to wear the uh, disposable mask disposable mask and also the uh, uh, face mask Uh, disposable gloves and face mask while providing oral and respiratory care and also while handling the stool and urine on other ways and you have to be very much careful while washing uh, the dishes because uh, these are the things which are being used by the patients they may be containing the uh, uh, virus particles that could cause uh, the spread of the disease you have to avoid the unnecessary visitors in your home because when the visitors you don't know whether they are carriers or they are already suffering so please avoid the uh, visitors to uh, to protect yourself and also your loved ones along with the people who are visiting you and it's very important to end the proper isolation or quarantine method as advised by the medical agencies and medical professionals because uh, most of the people who have uh, it has been said that they, they have been recurrent uh, uh, regular attacks of covid uh, when we see we have seen we have got the patient in our hospital saying that a person who has recovered from the covid with no other time with, with not even a, a time gap of 5 to 6 days he has got uh, infected for the second time why this has been happening this has been happening because there is uh, the people are not properly completing their uh, quarantine period they are not properly maintaining their isolation which is the most prominent task which they have to complete and this uh, this uh, this proper isolation quarantine will help to uh, improve the weakened immune system due to the uh, due to the corona uh, due to the covid virus and the cdc that is uh, center of uh, this is control also recommend that the 14 days of watch for the common symptoms and signs such as fever cough and other dysmic uh, symptoms ought to be uh, regularly monitored for the complete period of 14 days if a person is infected or if a person has come into contact with the patient who 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 has who has suffered or who is suffering with covid-19 and people who are recovered now we'll see the measures that can be taken to the people who are recovered like covid-19 has brought many changes in our lifestyle even after getting discharged from the hospital or at the end of the isolation so even after coming even after getting discharged it is very important that you have to keep your watch on the uh, saturation levels of uh, your body and it's better to check a regular uh, uh, regular body check up for the temperature and examine the signs of uh, uh, lethargy drowsiness and also sensorium usually uh, the prominent things when the people are coming to the hospitals or when they are losing their senses 
so people who are suffering with uh, temperature and suffering with the body pains are completely uh, ignoring their sim- ignoring the symptoms and they are coming to the hospitals or medical help uh, coming for the medical help only when their sensorium is altered so by the time what is happening is that the virus is completely occupying the person's immune system and the per- it it's re- it's making the immune system to compromise with the condition so it's better to have a watch on signs or symptoms which are uh, likely to fall you uh, to throw you under the risk of a covid 19 and uh, it, it's better to have uh, improved uh, hydration when a person uh, is uh, suffering or has been recovered from the uh, covid 19 the, the fluid may be uh, water coconut water juices and whatever the fluid that would support your cells that would support your hydration status of the body which would help to uh, uh, to recover yourself faster that is most important thing so always keep yourself hydrated and also um, uh, have a good amount of protein in your food uh, protein in your food because as we know the proteins are the uh, foods that are helpful to recover yourself and that are helpful for repair and recover of your body and system and everything like exercise should be done like yoga meditation whatever things which you are comfortable and within the 7 days of the discharge you should be regular follow up until you are confirmed by the medical practitioner or physician that you have been completely free from the signs and symptoms of the covid-19 now we see a few government policies which have been uh, uh, given uh, into the for the patients like uh, previously there were there was uh, lots of controversies that the people should get the health insurance or people are whether the people are getting into uh, covered with health insurance because the treatment has been mimicked that uh, it 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 costs more like even we have seen most of the people who have uh, lost their entire property and they they have thrown in uh, thrown themselves into financial crisis just to treat one or two patients who have uh, been infected with the covid 19 in their families so since the coronavirus is a viral infection it is now it, now the health insurance policies are being modified their policies and things to pay off pre and post hospitalization extension expenses including the inpatient and outpatient expenses uh, which are associated with the treatment of covid-19 the health insurance for the coronavirus will cover will be available from the day when you get insured for example if at all you are getting insured today from the immediate uh, period once you get insured you are eligible to get the insurance cover the two standard policies uh, are products which have been regularly uh, has been launched by the insurance regulatory and development authority of india are uh, the corona covers policy covid 19 insurance policy and corona rakshak policy which is the covid 19 insurance plan and this is one of the aishman bharat uh, pmj which crosses uh, 1 million 1 uh, crore milestone which they have uh, given free treatments for the patients where the covid uh, uh, e cards have been issued and also they have uh, committed to 53 uh, crore uh, citizens and now we'll see uh, the latest update which have been given by the ministry of health and family welfare these are the guidelines like on 21st of may means this month i have put down only the few uh, things which have been introduced in the uh, in, uh, in the uh, recent times that is uh, on 21st was like the guidelines uh, that has been included for the near to home covid vaccination means the covid vaccines are being given by the uh, healthcare workers and the door to door survey has been done and the, the vaccination is being available to each and every person uh, where they fall into the criteria and the eligibility so that has been done and also there is a clinical management protocol has been developed and also the uh, in the um, uh, the covid 19 clinical management protocol algorithms have also been reviewed and re- uh, revised and stand of policies of covid-19 containment management has been done on uh, 16th of may and on the 15th of may reimbursement of opd medicines have been initiated and on the 5th of may there was uh, uh, revised guidelines for the home isolation and asymptomatic covid-19 cases and the government of india is taking all the necessary steps to ensure so we have to be prepared well to face the challenge of the covid-19 pandemic the most important fa- factor to prevent is the spread of this virus locally to empower the citizens with the right information taking precautions as per the advisories being issued by Min- uh, ministry of health and family welfare so with this i would uh, I-, i would close the topic i would like to close the topic so if at all uh, any of the uh, persons or any of you 
uh, have any doubts now the time would be given for the discussion the topic is open for the discussion if at all anyone have any doubts regarding the self care measures you are open to ask the question okay thank you sir <clears throat> i would like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to you for your active participation in our international webinar that is impact on covid 19 on livelihood so you have stressed a word before uh, starting the session uh, everyone has speak but uh, knowledge will be for everyone but attitude and practice is very important in present situation how much knowledge on ha having regarding control measures will not affect unless we are we have a desired attitude and practice of control measures regarding covid 19 and its associated disorders definitely we all hope your presentation recapitulated us and our students knowledge and it will reflect their attitude and practice in controlling the covid 19 and associated disorders thank you thank you very much sir for your participation thank you now i am hand over in the session to ms neema madam vice principal and professor indira gandhi school and college of nursing for both of thanks thank you Okay. Good afternoon, one and all. I deem it's a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing on this occasion of webinar on impact of COVID-19 on livelihood review on 31st Feb 2021. Today. Let me first of all start by giving thanks to Almighty God for making today's occasion a great success and a remarkable one. First and foremost, I, on behalf of Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing, family, and entire fraternity of this institution, extend a hearty vote of thanks for our special guest of honor, our administrator, sir. for sir providing this valuable platform for coordinating and conducting the webinar and given a valuable keynote on this webinar thank you very much sir it's my immense pleasure and gratitude to express heartfelt thanks to our shrimati sharmila roy choudhary ma'am director of indira gandhi group of institution I thank ma'am for her kindness and interest of hospitality continued support for organizing and conducting this webinar thank you ma'am i thank our well wisher mr bolana tripathi sir general manager of sanjay gandhi memorial trust the person who always concerned for organizing this webinar event thank you sir it's my pleasure to thank our principal sir dr ilakkuvana baskara raj sir who is the backbone of this event planning and encouraging for organizing the apt topic and make this webinar a great success in a short period of time thank you sir i owe special thanks to all our eminent expert and delegate speaker for this valuable knowledge on sharing Uh, our uh, madam uh, dr bima mamaheshwari ma'am dr uh, vasundha kumari ma'am uh, dr manjuri ma'am and uh, professor uh, chetan kumar sir uh, for the for their uh, valuable uh, information and uh, knowledge dissemination to our uh, delegates in this uh, international webinar uh, thank you all speakers uh, for your uh, kind information and dissemination of information thank you ma'am and sir Uh, my heartfelt thanks to all the delegates who participated in this webinar section and made this one a remarkable success i hope you all got information and adhere knowledge regarding our webinar topic that is impact of covid 19 livelihood this is an important uh topic in this current situation whatever information you have gathered you disseminated and make it in a practice in your 
in your future section. Thank you all. The secret of crisis management is not good versus bad. It's preventing the bad from getting it worse. So our India likelihood has affected for all the migrant worker, agriculture, fishing, poultry, self-group people, and it has been worsened in these sectors. And uh, if you see, each life is precious. If we lost a life in our family, then only we can understand how much pain it is. So in our India, we have losses, uh, our grandparents, parents, husband, wife, uh, sisters, brothers, son, daughter. It's a very uh, emotional situation. So uh, my kind advice on behalf of our management and Indira Gandhi School and College of Nursing, please, please wear your mask, always use sanitizers, do frequent hand washing, maintain social distancing, be in your home. Stay home, stay safe, be healthy. We are in this crisis together and we will get this through together. Thank you. You can watch this webinar on any time in our YouTube channel, rgcsk.edu. We will soon meet in another webinar. Thank you so much for all the delegates, those who have participated in our webinar today. Thank you all. Thank you. Excellent job done. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And thank you all speakers. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Neema. Thank you, Baskar, for giving us a very good opportunity to enlighten on this topic. Uh, the webinar was very nice, okay, well organized, uh, very little uh, in, uh, internet issues, but then also you can able to cope up. And really, uh, it was a very good online platform to see and interact each and everyone. And my dear friends, Vasanti, Manjuri, Askar, Neema, everyone, uh, really, we are very far also that uh, this webinar, uh, webinar uh, really made us to meet each other. And uh, really, I uh, really thankful to Dr. Baskar for giving a wonderful opportunity to highlight on a very needed topic that is the emerging topic, uh, the COVID-19, impact of COVID-19 on livelihood. Okay, thank you very much, Baskar, Neema, thank and you. everybody. And also to the management, really, we uh, today only we have seen you the management personnel also very nicely they have interacted with us uh, thank you sirs thank you madam thank you all thank you thank you all thank you Namaste, namaste to everybody. Thank you so much. And also I thank Baskar for giving this great opportunity to share the platform for, with my dearies, my best friends. I think, you know, UG classmates, really today I'm feeling so proud for Baskar. And Baskar, being my classmate, UG classmate, I think you are doing a wonderful job, a great leader. Okay. And also you are very great opportunity. I am wholeheartedly, I express the gratitude for a great organization. So I, I think uh, the problem, a little bit of problem with the organization, maybe because of me only, because there may be, I'm I extremely sorry, kindly bear with my uh, internet issues. And I'm very, very much happy to be connected with you all in the future also, because we like to share the expertise and we, you, we have to exchange with each other. You have to be with us and we have to be with, I will be with you all. Okay. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Bhima. My mm -hmm. dear friend, Man Manjuri, and uh, really, and also Chetan, I don't know, but still, it was a very good presentation of yours. Congrats. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the management also for the support, what they've given, for the opportunity, what they provided. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wind up this program. We will meet you on uh, another thank webinar. Thank you. you. Good thank you, uh, thank you so much uh, yes, to the management once again. And very happy uh, to see um, management persons are there throughout the seminar. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, you're blessed to have them. And uh, yes, uh, thanks to Dr. Baskar and Dr. Neema. Mm -hmm. uh, though I don't know personally, uh, mm -hmm. but I've uh, heard about you both. Mm -hmm. And today I could um, uh, yes. see that and feel it. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share the platforms uh, with yes, my are... friends and with you all. Hope I have done justice today uh, with my presentation. And thank you so much. And you to all the participants, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you all.
thank you for a wonderful day